Dungeons and Dragons. And Junk Drawer. What's up, guys? Hello. Hi. Whoa. Things are different. We are back ish. Yeah. But ish. virtually. <laughs> 21st century. Yeah. It only takes us two hours to get to this point. Uh, <laughs> no, no joke either. Oh, that is complete seriousness. Uh, so we are uh, Curse of Strahd is over. We are trying out some new characters, and uh, we're all going to run a one shot to give Justin a break from DMing consistently. Uh, so our first one is going to be Carlos, and he's running a Knight of Masks and something else. Monsters. That sounds right. And next will be Mike. Mike will be next, so you guys will get to look forward to that. But other than that, do we want to go around the table and just talk about what we're playing, names of characters and stuff, because we're already going to jump into a universe where we know one another? Yeah, real quick, oh, yeah. real quick, I was going to say, just as a recap, the reason we're now doing Roll20 is that I live in Colorado. Uh, Roll20 is a little is a little finicky. So if you have any suggestions, put it down in the comments down below and tell us which one of us you think has the best shirt on. Mine's pretty cool. Uh, gang, gang. I, I think I'm actually going to give it to Pat. Oh, but Carlos has a tie. I'm not wearing sleeves. But also, the tie matches my earrings. Oh, Carlos wins. But also, Yang Gang. <laughs> Yang Gang? I don't know. My shirt's got a snake on it. So. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let's jump into characters and do that whole thing. Uh, yeah, uh, Josh, lead us off, Colorado boy. Ooh, Colorado boy. Okay. Um, yeah, so my name's Lumen, and I'm a high elf monk. Uh, the sun, sun soul, sun soul. So I'm basically Goku. Uh, still working on this voice, so it might shift every once in a while. It was Irish for a moment. Uh, I'm a follow follower of. Um, I'm doing Absidy. What, Justin? Who, who, who do I follow? It's I O U N. How do you pronounce that? It's Ayun. Ayun. I'm a follower of uh, Ayun, and uh, that's who I am. Pat. Nice. Uh, I'm Bray Stone. Uh, I'm a circle of the moon wood elf druid, and I just I just want to hang out with my friends. Very excited. We are similar. All right. All right. So that means. All right. <clears throat> my name's Big John Anthony. I am a mountain dwarf cleric, uh, tempest domain cleric, uh, follower of Thor, and. Um, they call me Big John. Don't let that alarm you. I'm actually pretty short, so yeah. Um, I guess that's me then. Uh, I am Kane Redden. I am a human gunslinger rogue. Uh, I know edgy. Uh, like to wear cowboy hat, trench coat, and I have a revolver. And I do enjoy coin. He's saying corn for those of you that aren't aware. Not corn. He's from Iowa. Not corn. He's basically saying he lacks the money. Yeah. Like <laughs> it grows in stocks and fields. It's great. Not that can't. It's That's delicious. amazing. If you, if you pop it, it's great. <laughs> Cream it. <laughs> Pass it. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and I, I am Carlos, and I will be playing your DM for tonight. <laughs> Yeah. Um, real quick before we start, I just want to give a shout out to the author of this one shot. I actually found this on DMs Guild. So if you guys want to play it, go ahead and go to DMs Guild. Um, and it is Ashley Warren. The title of it is A Night of Masks and Monsters. So there it is. Ta -da. Um, so yeah, so we're just going to jump right in now that we have all our introductions. You guys ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. All right, I'm going to try to see if I can read this in a way that I'm not staring down on my desk. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, in the city of Ibrido, locals enjoy the life of splendor and frivolity. Also, by the way, folks, just know that I'm dyslexic, so bear with me with reading. Every week, a lavish party is held at the Castle de Masquera, hosted by the Marquis de Masquera, 
Prospero, who has a reputation for being a generous party thrower and an avid patron for the arts. Receiving an invitation to the Marquis the Mascara's party are coveted, and those who enter the social circle never leave it. But the castle of the Mascara holds many secrets. When a strange hybrid creature, half bird, half man, is found brutally murdered in Iberdo City Square, tattooed with the Marquis' signature symbol of two masks, rumors have begun to spread through Iberdo that something more sinister has occurred. Did the Marquis de Mascara's party simply just get out of hand? Or does a real danger threaten the inhabitants of Iberdo? So, you, the party, as a thanks to completing a previous quest, are giving an all expense paid vacation to the luxurious city of Iberdo. Oh my have, Having received word of your visit, the Marquis the Mascara has sent you an invitation to the party at the castle, the Mascara. There is a port in Iberdo that is on the, or there is a, a port to Iberdo at the docks of Waterdeep where you all meet and you are transported by gondola across the deep blue lagoon and deposited in Iberdo City Square at sunset. And I will send you in your journals. You should have the invitation now. Our journal? What? Wow. Yes, I do see that. Um, are you good at reading? I mean, <laughs> I'm not the best, but I could give it a try. That's all right. I mean, I can do it. <laughs> uh, adventurous. I've received word of your impending travels to Orido. Is that it? Iberdo. 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 Tarnation. Don't worry, I say it wrong. As a thank you for your service to the realms. You are hereby invited to attend a masquerade ball at the Castle de Mascarea during your stay in Bredio. What is it? Iberdo. Iberdo. <laughs> nonsense names. Partake in decadent food, wine, and entertainment. Oh, we're going to see someone hanging from something. Please dress in your finest attire. Uh, decorative masks will be provided to you upon your arrival. Present this invitation at the door to admit entry. I look forward to meeting you in person. Uh, Prospero, Marquis de Mascara. Uh, now, <clears throat> it said on that wine, <laughs> you think they got mead too? Oh, I don't know. I would assume, yes. Oh, good. I love a good mead. Oh, you would love mead. He's quite small for someone so large. Your voice is very booming. Thank you. <laughs> not you. It's... Yeah, me. <laughs> no, See? not you. Oh, okay. I was going to say, it's funny, because see, that's, you get my name. That's where it comes from, Big John, but I'm really sure it's great. He's doing the name thing again. God, we have not had enough time apart, have we? Ah, oh, feels like it's been two hours. <laughs> Give or take. Kane, your face says you're unhappy, and you should just not be that. You know what? I never thought of it like that. That's so much better. It's better for me. As soon as you turn around, it's gonna... <laughs> so you board your gondolas over to the town square of Iberdo. Um, Just a reminder, Bray, you're an elf. Yes. Lumen as well? Yes, I'm a high elf. Big John? Uh, Mountain Dwarf. Mountain Dwarf and Kane? Human. Thanks, sir. All right. Ew. So, uh, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> so as you see, Iberdo is a city comprised of many islands connected via canals. Uh, they all serve as trading posts for the region. Its inhabitants are extremely wealthy. So you are taken to a lovely city How square. Well. Very wealthy. Uh, you are taken to a lovely city square paved in cobblestones. The perimeter is lined with buildings painted on jeweled tones. You see some red, some blues. Think of Venice 
it's very Venetian real world. Every building varies in structure. Some have very arched windows and doorways. Others have very rectangular windows filled with stained glass. But the effects altogether seem very pleasing. Um, in the evening, all the street lamps are lit, casting a very warm glow over the city. And you are dropped there in the city square. Well, isn't this lovely? I love the water and the, the foliage. It truly reminds me of home. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk around and like just like run, run my hands on some trees and the grass and just soak it in. Nice do, smile. First roll of the night. Everyone do me a perception check. Modded 20. Modded 20. 22. Okay. Uh, 14. Okay. <laughs> Mine's going to be worse. Uh, 12. 12. Uh, this isn't hard to notice. All of you see this. When you're looking around, you see that there are many people here. Like, you're obviously not the only ones invited to this party. It is a very lavish, and um, everyone that you see around is wearing very high-end garments. Um, you also notice, especially those that rolled over 15, you notice that there's a very high abundance of races that you normally don't see in the realm. You see some Tritons, you see some Ganassis, you see some Tortle, you see a little everything. And where in other regions this would be odd, here no one seems to look twice. You notice that this is a very... Um, highly touristy area that no one really thinks twice of races that are not common in uh, the the realm. Oh, that's wonderful. The fuck is that? So much into me. <clears throat> you mean to tell me that there's going to be elves here that don't think that I'm weird? I wouldn't go no. that far. I'm so weirded out by you. I'm but say. You're so nice. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'd always take a compliment. He's so nice. Have you ever met a, is it Tortle? Is that what those are called? Mm-hmm. Have you ever met one of those before, Bray? Uh, no, I, I think I'd like to. Let's go. Yeah. And then uh, Bray and I are gonna walk mm -hmm. up to the nearest Tortle and just speak with him. You are exceptional. I love your shell. Uh, th thank you. What brings you are here? Are you the party? You as well. Oh, you must tell me more. Yes. Um, I was invited last week by the Prospero himself. Us too. We got a correspondence. Can I myself as well? Can I touch your shell? If you must, and he turns around. And I, I slowly just run Absolutely. my hand down, just trying to like absorb. I don't this slowly. Music. It's I've a never hand before. flap on there, and just like yes. <laughs> it's a turtle shell. Like turtles are fairly large. They're about six feet, six and a half feet tall. So I'm reaching and, like, up. I like. Well, it's, the shell takes his entire back. Oh. Um. So yeah. So he's like, well, I must go, but hopefully I'll see you inside. Yes. Oh, what, uh. what is your name? My name? It's John. John, oh, very nice to meet you. And I, I reach out and, and shake his hand aggressively. I'm just going to keep a hand on his back until he walks away. <laughs> I do hope to see you again later. Likewise. And just and leave he... my hand there. So it's, it's there until he walks away. Oh, he starts walking away. He starts going towards the castle. And he kind of like looks back at you as like weirdos. Uh, so as you go through the city square, you notice that um, on the very... Where are you? If you're walking in, you're walking north right now. So I would say towards your west, where this circular building is on the top of the map. That's a clock tower. Um, it's a very large clock tower. And you see that it's close to hitting about eight o'clock at night. Every, uh, the sun is setting and it's, it's pretty lavish. Like it's pretty, like every hour there's like just gems that 
have the numbers etched in so it's not all carved in it's like you'll see rubies as the number one sapphires as the number two emeralds as the number three so on and so forth and those are um, real and those are real correct like everything in the city you you seem to realize that everyone's pretty used to everything being so high end there doesn't seem to be anyone that looks like they're going to steal um people have their coin purses out in the open without like any two thoughts of potentially being stolen you know yeah. it's <laughs> oh, keep, yeah. please keep telling me describe to um me. <laughs> The coin purses, yeah. Uh, so, and then around this, this seems to be a very, since everyone docks here in order to get all of the, uh, to land for the party, and this happens on a weekly basis that they have this party, there are a lot of markets around. One market you see that they're selling like all of these, they're trinkets, and you can tell that they're not really um, expensive. They're just doing what they can to earn some money here and there, some merchants. So over here, they are selling like tapestries. Over here, they're selling like, you know, jewelry, so on and so forth. So there's like a little of everything. It's kind of a small bazaar before you head into the actual party. Understood. It's uh, a bit rich for my blood, if you ask me. Oh, there it is. Are everything sold in the bazaar? Is it. Is it high end? Is it high end as well? Um, do a perception check. Nine. For the most part, you realize some things seem very shiny. Other things seem like you could have done this at home in like five minutes. So these are just people that don't necessarily get invited to the parties, but are still trying to make money off of it. They're the gift shop to the party pretty much. Kane, don't yeah. waste your time. It's peasant. Um, in the center of the square, where you see the circle, you see that there's a makeshift memorial for a recently deceased creature. Um, the memorial includes a cluster of candles, several long blue feathers, and a wooden amulet onto which there is a symbol of an eye carved into it. Um... Hold on. You have a cleric, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do a religion check. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> Let's see. And if not, I'll let one of one other one of you do a religion check as well. Not me. Minus one. Plus two. Uh, I rolled a two. <laughs> I mean, I don't, One's a plus two. I don't like touching that religious shit. Lewin, go ahead and do a religion check. So it was a two for Big John. Fourteen. Uh, 14. I want to walk around and see if I can find anything like super duper nature y. Right. So, real quick, Lumen, you realize that this has to be a holy symbol of some kind. However, because you're not familiar with this area, you don't exactly know who this holy symbol is for. And the holy symbol looks kind of like that. So it's like an eye in the middle of a star. Um, you said you wanted to see something, sorry, a Bray? Yeah, I just want to see if there's anything like that kind of fits with Bray's aesthetic. Uh, do a perception check. Natural 20. Natural 20. Oh yeah. Like there is a nearby uh, up here. If you can see the little blip. Um, in that little shop right there, like you totally see um, this very ornate bracelet mm -hmm. with all these stones that are not very commonly found in this realm. You could attain that it would probably cost about 500 gold, just this one bracelet. Oh, um, just fuck. because of the, the rare stones in it, you would definitely... The metal itself, you don't really care for, but the stones themselves are extremely rare. I just want to walk up to the, the merchant at that table and go, oh, those stones are beautiful. Yes, they are. I will sell it to you for 750 gold pieces. What if I didn't want the metal that is around the stone? Oh, no, it's a set. Everything goes together. It took me a long time to put it together. Oh, it's terrible, except for the stones. They're great. Um, tell you what, I will sell you the stones for 600 gold pieces. 
Uh, I don't quite believe in gold, but thank you. And I'll just turn and walk away. Suit yourself if you know a buyer, let me know. <laughs> and you walk away. Um, um, tell me, uh, the people perusing around, is there anyone that's particularly um, heavy pocketed? Heavy pocketed? Uh, do a perception. <laughs> you want to steal all these bitches' money. Well, we gotta get six hundred gold, don't we? <laughs> um, that's gonna be about a fourteen. A fourteen? You look around, not around you right now, but you think that more promising individuals may be inside. Like, there's Maybe. a couple purse, coin purse here and there, but you've seen plenty enough to know. Oh, that holds probably about twenty gold. That holds right. probably about thirty. Yeah, that's sustainable. Yeah, you want the good stuff. Yeah, the good stuff, you have an idea that it may be inside. Okay. Can I peruse the uh, the area, uh, obviously the one that uh, Bray went to, but I kind of want to go in that semicircle, just kind of see if there's anything else that might catch the eye. I'll go with him, just yeah. to, just because he likes being near Kane, even though he doesn't really like Kane. <laughs> like picking things up, inspecting, putting it down, like, oh, this is lovely. Um, yeah, so like as you're walking around though, uh, this human woman walks up to you guys, mm. actually. How attractive. And uh, <laughs> how attractive? Yeah. She's pretty attractive. All right. She's she pretty, to be in her, we've got a pretty lady on our hands. Yeah, she, she, she looks to be about in her mid to late 20s, like brunette, down her, uh, to the middle of her back, her hair, wearing this gorgeous blue dress. Um, and a mask of a dragon sits on her head. So it's not on yet. What color? That is a good question. Golden dragon. I'd like to uh, kind of bow half uh, from my waist down um, and say, ma'am, as well, I, I do see that you have a very particular mask on the top of that beautiful, beautiful crown of yours. Well, thank you very much. It's actually a gift from my uh, my family. But she looks over at the at the center of the square and sees the makeshift altar, and she's like, "It's it's sad what happens. It happened last week, actually. A day after the Marquis's last party, a body of a strange creature was found in the square." He was half human and half bird with large blue wings. Those are actually some of the feathers right there in the makeshift altar uh, that sprouted from his back. His arms and shoulders were covered in feathers. We think he was murdered because his wings were broken. And he it seemed that he had fallen from the sky. Nothing like this has ever happened here. Most of the citizens regard it as a fluke, but we get many visitors after all. Do you think it was a fluke? I'd hate to see you upset, ma'am. I've I've never seen anything like this before, so I don't know. Like it could be. I've oh, lived through my whole life. I'm just gonna put my hand on her shoulder and be like, I'm so sorry. She looks at you and says thank you. I got a question for you. Yes. So what what did she do to me? What happened? She says thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah, um pretty lady, got a question for you. Um that altar over there. I've never seen that symbol before. Can you explain it to me? Oh, that's the symbol of the Aurum. Everyone do a perception check real quick. As she gestures over to the altar. 14. 7. Okay. Anyone above a 12. <laughs> I got 21. a 12. 21. Nice. And 12? Yeah. And so anyone above a 12, as she points at the altar, you notice in the palm of her hand is tattooed that same exact symbol on her hand. Uh, hold up here, lady. You got that tattooed on your hand, too. Oh, yes. I There's a tattoo artist inside the Marquis party, and I got this old thing a few parties ago. Like, uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful symbol. I got a tattoo, too. Do you want to see it? It depends on where it is. Oh, uh, it's on my backside. Oh, then no, I'll pass this time. Thank you. Oh, you sure? It's really pretty. <laughs> Go to start pulling down my armor. I'm, I'm good. You can. No, no, no. All right. All right. All right. I'm. I'm. 
I'm a little worried about the murder. If you're going to the party, just be careful. Oh well. I'm so, I'm sorry. What what was your name? My name is Kara. K A R A. Oh, Kara. That's a lovely name. Kara Cass Cassandriel. Carasandel. Oh my God. K R A S A N D E L. Crescendel. That name Crescendel. suits you well. It's Kara Crescendel. Thank you so much. It was given to me, birth given after, actually. Oh, my name is Bray. Nice to meet you, Bray. You should check out the tattoo artist. She's actually really good. Do you think she can do anything involving the moon? I think she can do anything in general. Oh, that would be lovely. They're free tattoos. I got this one for free. I'm gonna do it. Wait, wait, you got it. the tattoo for free? Do they do any of the uh, enchanted tattoos? I don't, you'd have to ask her. I don't know if she does or not. That'd be a pretty good price for free. <laughs> Yeah, I like mine. It's supposed to be a symbol of light and hope. Uh, can I roll insight on her to see if she's kind of... Yes, you can. Sweet. My insight is pretty <clears throat> good, actually. I would actually like to assist him with that. That is okay. Thank you for that. You can either do it with advantage or each one of you, you want to roll or do you want me to... Um, well, hold on. Mine is pretty good, too. Um, If you'd like my help, I have a plus four. I uh, plus three, so go ahead. Yeah, so let me give it a shot here. Oh, uh, 18. Okay, and what'd you get, Pat? 10. 10. <laughs> uh, so, Big John, you notice that not everything that she's saying is up front. Um, when she says that she was raised here her whole life, it doesn't seem like she was entirely telling the truth. It seems like she was kind of hiding from where she actually was, but that's pretty much what you get. She seemed very upfront and very forthright saying that the holy symbol, or that that was a holy symbol of protection on her hand. All right. But you do seem that she was lying about the fact that she's not from around here, but. I, I just, I would just like to know, Kara, uh, what, do you need protection from? If this is the first incident, what uh, what what are you afraid of? Oh, there are many dark things that go bump in the night, especially in the world, especially in this day and age. You can never be too careful. But you said that this is a hello, Lumen. By the way, uh, you said Hi. that this is a very safe place, and, and the first time that anything's happened was that bird person over there. Correct. So, and you. You, but you've had the tattoo for multiple parties now, correct? Correct. Correct. I've had it for about a couple months now. So if that's do the first time that you've needed here? something, what, what do you need protection from? Oh, it's just, you can never have too much protection in life. You know, I could have protection from, you know, what if someone tries to pickpocket me if I decide to travel somewhere else in the world, you know? Like Gene just, wouldn't let that happen. He always looks out for my gold. There are very dark things, not here but in other places in the world again one can never be too protected of course and really quick before we keep going during this interaction can i slink away to the where the altar is while everyone's kind of distracted by kara yeah and like uh, everyone seems to be talking to her pretty like up front so i'll let you just go ahead without a cell phone okay how crowded is the altar not very. You notice that like several people here and there will walk by, kind of like look at the altar, pay like kind of like bow or like look to see at the feathers and mm -hmm. the candles or light a candle here or there. But it's not packed. Like it's just like people will pass by, pay their respects, and keep walking towards the party. Okay, I would like to approach the altar and pretend that I'm trying to stifle from crying of how terrible this is. I'd like to get as close as I can to the altar and I'd like to swipe a feather. All right, uh, yeah. do a sled of hand. My stars, he was so young and so deformed and gross. I botch. <laughs> Too much. A nat one. Roll. Yeah, I got a nat one. Oh. Oh, that, you trip and knock over some of the candles. They go out before lighting anything on fire, but like you're now just like falling into like 
the blanket that has been set up on the floor for the altar. Uh, as that happens, I run up to Kane and and as, oh, are, are you okay? And I'd like to pocket the the feather while he pulls me up. Do do, right. I, do I see that? Do a uh, stealth and a, uh, a sleight of hand and a uh, perception. Uh, perception twenty one. Uh, he definitely sees it. Okay, and then let me see. I'm just looking at the general. I mean, some people see you pocket it, but not really anybody says much, just because there's still a few feathers on there, so no one really cares. Like, they all seem to just keep walking towards the party. Like, you know, um, one or two people help you put the candles back in place and kind of, like, relight them, but, like, no one's bothered by the fact that you took a feather it's a feather yeah, no i i just i'm a little klutzy and i'm a i'm a you know a collector of uh, the strange and unusual and i just was interested in the feather i'm just going to set these candles up of course at, and you notice the, the feather's about a foot long by the way like it's not a small feather it's about right. a foot as, long. as i'm helping him up i want it because i my goal was also to do the same thing so seeing him do mm-hmm. that i want to just say we're going to talk about that later and I also try to swipe one myself. Oh, uh, that was the whole point. There's still a few on there, so yeah, you can successfully take one as well. So both of you have a blue. What did I say? It was a blue. Yeah, blue wing. A long, blue, yeah, a blue feather. And um, I'll go up to to Kane. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was one of your friends. Um, yeah, something like that. We need to look over something and see if you might be able to identify it. I'm sorry for your loss. I appreciate that. And Kara just looks at you and is like, well, I don't want to keep you much longer. You enjoy the party, but just keep an eye out. Be careful. Miss Kara, you're going to be inside. I will. I'm just waiting for a couple friends to get here and we'll be walking in together. Where are your friends coming from? Is oh, there any coming from Waterdeep. No, no tortoises. Like, they're both human. No. Maybe we can share a drink later. Maybe. I'll let you know when I find you inside. So only three friends, or three of you then? Uh, for, like there's three friends coming, oh. so there will be four of us in total. Perfect. Uh, real quick before you go, any of you like short guys? <laughs> I don't know about their taste, but we'll see. All right. And she moves out of your way and invites you to cross the bridges to go over to. The entrance. Do it. So Ray just starts like skipping and like just going across the bridge and is just enjoying the sun and so Ray's I going across. I much this guy was. Everybody going across? Uh yeah. yeah. Cool. But I'll put all you Oh I, I wanna over. I wanna drop back behind with Kane. Okay. So Kane back, Loon back. Big John, I'm gonna put you in the middle. And right. Ray. Also, Carlos, if you can move slightly away from the mic. Yeah, like just, Better? Yeah, just around there. All right. And then I'll put you here. Did you want to do anything while you travel towards the entrance? I'd like to make a perception check just to see if anybody is necessarily watching us or uh, if we're getting any weird or dirty looks from anyone. Yeah, go ahead and do a perception check. Everyone? Okay. If you mm-hmm. want. Sure. I'll perceive something. I got nat 20. I rolled an 11. 11, nat 20. 9. 9. And oh, hold on. Uh, not great. I uh, rolled an, uh, a 9 as well. All right. Wow, I rolled um, the second highest perception, and that was a an 11. That's so bad. Yeah, no, no one's looking at you weird at all. Like, because of the mixed races that are here, um, and just... There's so many colors, it's almost sensory overload. Like, people are wearing orange dresses and, like, blue masks, and some are bejeweled, some are... It's just, there's... It's very overwhelming color-wise that, honestly, like, you as a person don't look out of place. Um, Are any of you wearing your armor? If you're wearing your armor, it doesn't look out of place. Like, literally, everything seems normal. Like some people, like you, um, some people are wearing very scantily clad clothing, like very minimal clothing. Others are very um, 
what am I thinking of? Uh, Marie Antoinette type dresses. Like it's a broad range of styles, but all of it seems to be high end. But yeah, no one's looking at you bad at all. Um, when you proceed across the bridge, you see a queue of people waiting to enter the party, R including- R Hold on, hold on. I wanted to talk yeah. to Kane as we were walking yeah. up there. Go for it. Just, uh, oh, that was a good, uh, good swipe you did there. Wasn't my best. Yeah. You know you could have asked me. What, to swipe it? To help you out, like we have before. This isn't the first time we've tried to take something. I understand that, but everyone was pretty occupied with Kara. I figured I'd just slink away and do my thing. I understand. See if we can get Bray to look at the feather. Okay, I understand. I'm picking up your accent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, okay. I'm picking up your I'm pick, accent. I'm picking up your accent. Well, we have two now, just in case. But just remember next time, we work together. I will keep it in mind. And I just, I touch him on the shoulder as I move forward. All right. And then just out of curiosity, like what's your heights just for the hell of it? Um, Five, how much? <laughs> I'm, I would say I'm like almost six feet tall. All right. Are, are elves tall? Very lanky. Are elves taller? I thought they were shorter. Yeah, elves are like six feet. Oh, then I'm- They're like elves. my height. Yeah, so I'm like six feet also. Yeah, that would make sense. Very John? lanky, very thin. Um, I'm I think about John like, would be what, like four? Four foot. Yeah, probably about four feet tall. Good. And Kane? I would say probably like 5'11. Okay. I was just having a general idea in my head. Cool. So, um, you guys proceed to cross the bridge, you queue up in the line, and you see a very tall woman wearing a very detailed black cat mask waves you forward towards her and you head over towards her um using the perception checks that you had earlier i'm just gonna tie it all in together anyone that rolled an 11 you realize that when she reaches out and asks for your invitation that her hands are paused you notice that the cat mask is not a mask she's actually a tabaxi she's a cat person and she asks invitations you are beautiful. Oh, here we go again. That's very nice. I'm just here to do my job. Please hand over invitation. And I wanna I wanna put her hands together and druid craft a flower into her like into her paws. Thank you, and sets it on the table right next to her. Invitations. And I'll just turn and look at Kane. Yeah, no, I got it. Um I'm gonna take out the invitations. They're a little crumbled and banged up. Yeah. There she is. Okay. Um, no, um, did you give me yours? Hold on, Sue. Uh, yeah, I'll just say it's the same invitation for all of you. It's a group invitation. All right. It's a plus. It's a yeah. all four of you. Um, so she offers next to her, there's that table, and there's a plethora of masks that are on that table. She lets you know that these are there for you to wear at the party. Um and to pick one. Now, I'm going to do this, interestingly, roll initiative for who gets to pick what mask first. I'm going to also send you in your journals, a kind of like a picture of all of the masks, and I'll tell you what animal is what. It just popped up, okay. Okay. Um, there are nine masks to choose from. You have, let me go in order, uh, a deer mask, a wolf mask, a fox, a bear, a hare, a lynx, an owl, a boar, and a squirrel. So, um, give me your initiative real quick. Eight. I rolled a 16. 12. 16. 14. 14. And then you said eight? Yep. All right. So, Big John, you go up to the table first, and which mask would you like? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I like to think that I'm pretty cunning, so I'll go ahead and take the fox. So you take the fox mask. All right. And you grab that. 
Uh, next, um, Kane, which mask would you like? Say I'm not really a mask guy. Um, I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the wolf. The wolf. All right. I'm writing stuff down. Fox. Wolf. All right, the brain. I would love to take the uh, the owl mask. The owl, all right. And lumen. Oh, there's so many good ones to choose from. I think I will take the lynx. I've always been a fan of cats. And then I look at the the lady, the tabaxi, handing out, and I give her a, a wink. The lynx. All right. Um. Which actually, Mike, I sent that to you earlier, so pretend like you didn't see that yet. <laughs> I was like, wait, it's not that time yet. Oh, okay. So I, I didn't, don't look at it yet? Yeah, don't look at it. If you already look at it, it's fine. Just pretend like you didn't. Yeah. I just know that your stuff is going to be different than everybody else's. Um, all right. So you guys each. So we got the fox. We got the wolf. I'm pulling it. I have cards in my hands. I'm on the owl. And you said the lynx? Yep. Cool. Perfect. Did, did she respond to my, my flirtation? She, you can tell that she's kind of just here to do her job. She she gets people flirting with her all the time that she honestly doesn't think any differently of you guys flirting with her versus everyone else flirting with her. I'm special. You are special. Uh, thank you. I don't doing this, I'm going to go up to... Uh, to John, and I'm gonna look at my wolf mask. I'm gonna say, "Hey, John." <laughs> oh, John's inside. Yeah. John's already passed oh, you. John. Big John. Oh, Big, big John, John Anthony. Sorry, I thought you meant John the turtle. John, not John. John. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. I'm gonna say, uh, "Hey, Big John here." Yeah. Uh, I have this here wolf mask. Now I know you took the the fox one. But, I mean, you're pretty cunning, but I think you are much wise and powerful like the wolf. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm a smart one, but... Wisdom doesn't have to do with smarts. Uh, You've seen a lot in your time, like a wolf. uh, You might be a little bit right. We'll travel in packs. Usually a lot more powerful than a fox, and you're a lot more powerful than I am. I would feel... Awful if I had this and you had that fox mask. Are you you trying to say you want want to swap masks? That's a wonderful idea. <laughs> Wait, Kane's such a piece of shit. <laughs> Was that my idea? You just suggested it. I mean, I'll be more than happy to part with this to, to trade with you if, if you'd like to barter that. Well, I mean, I, I you, am very wise. So yeah, you let's go ahead. Roll a persuasion it. check. Oh, okay. Roll a persuasion? Yeah, just for the hell of it. Just for the hell of and, it. And uh, do a, Mike, do an insight check. No, retcon that last part. That didn't so happen. is it persuasion or deception? Sorry, deception. That's what I meant. Okay. Which one was higher? Insight? Correct. I'm cocked. Uh, modded 20. 16. 16. John, you can tell that he's just like bullshitting, the, the, saying that this is your idea. Like, this is totally his idea and trying to man- manipulate you to giving him your mask. So, uh, what's in it for me to swap masks, eh? You have a bitch and wolf mask. I need more than that. All right, if you don't want it, gonna keep walking. And Bray will come up and just be like, "Big John, come on, give it to Kane. You don't care. There'll be plenty of wine. And here, and I'll I'll druid craft another flower and hand it to him. It's it's very nice, Bray. But all right, like, can I talk to the cat lady? All right, go for it. Uh. Hey, if if he wants to to swap for me fox mask, could I swap for something else? Yes, I do not care. As long as you wear your mask throughout the party, that would not matter. All right, fine. Take the fox. Oh, thank you. I'm, uh... 
Go roll a d4 here because I'm between two. Okay. I didn't decide which one. <laughs> Do you want me to pull the Mike, you're too up? in character. <laughs> is this in character though, or is this just Mike in a game? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm not sure. All right. So evens is the bear. Odds is the boar. Bear. I thought you were going to go for the boar. Huh? I thought you were going to go for the boar. Yeah. Uh, well, looks like I'm the bear. Bear it is. All right. I'm so the boar. Are you the boar? Uh, yeah, the boar. Alexa, what are you talking about? Disregard. Braille, Braille go up to... Uh, Thank you, cat lady. He'll go up to Kate and just be like, Oh, I, I, I tried to help you so you could get the fox mask. You did a fantastic job. I appreciate you. Thank you, Kate. Look at the fox mask. Cool. And so... Skip off. <laughs> The black cat woman tells you that you must wear your mask at all time. It is for your protection. Um, just because there has been a sickness that wiped out many people in this area many, many years ago. And the Marquis is a very superstitious individual. So for his protection, for your protection, and just in general for hygiene reasons, he doesn't want the plague to re-pass through this area, so you must wear your mask at all time in the party. Inside um, check? Yeah, you're going to inside check. Uh, 18? 18? Yeah. She seems to be telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Like, the masks do have an enchantment on them. And Can we, as far as she does, it is for your protection. Do we know what the enchantment is? Mm -hmm. She just says it is for your protection. <clears throat> And that also adds to, adds to the um, atmosphere of the masquerade. So everyone in the masquerade must wear a mask. I am a fan of aesthetic. And you notice that these masks are the kind that have your mouth open. Like it is like the, the ones that you put up here, Sexy. but all of this is open. Cool. That's pretty good. I'm not good with the talking. So she directs you forward and offers you to step inside. Everyone goes in? Yeah, I'm gonna go. Yep. Perfect. And you go inside. Let my mask on. Okay. All right. This is where a lot of reading happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. So keep in mind that it is dusk. It is around um, seven, almost, it's almost eight o'clock. It hasn't hit eight yet. Otherwise you would have heard the giant gong of the cat, uh, of the, clock tower um and here you see that the castle is very much candlelit within chandeliers emit a golden glow over the festivities metallic accessories glint in its uh in its rays feeble remains of daylight filter through the stained glass windows that cast colorful patterns onto the high stone walls um and i will give you a quick um description of your map what you would be able to see. Right when you walk in over to your left, you'll see a staircase that leads down. You'll see three women that are uh, belly dancers up on in this area right here. Uh, you see them uh, over towards your, uh, just past them in the middle of the floor, you see a gnome bard that is uh, playing his fiddle. You see over towards your right over here, is a snake charmer that is playing his oboe and the snake is just following it. And on the very far end of the room, you see back here, a, a, a card, a fortune teller with reading tarot cards to people here and there. Everyone else in the party seems to be attending it as a guest. Everyone has a mask, including the performers that are performing in this party. All of them have a mask. Um, even the three belly dancers all are wearing an owl mask. The the bard is wearing a finch mask. You see all the lavish feathers on it. The snake charmer has a mask of a snake. And then far side, uh, there's a drow fortune teller that has a mask of a scorpion. Is there any, uh, is there any like big window panes or anything? Oh yeah, like they are giant stained glass windows throughout the whole, um, towards your left and towards your right 
on both sides is just giant stained glass windows. That's where the light is coming in from the sunset and just staining the entire ground with all these reds and greens and blues and yellows. Like it almost adds like a very surreal feel to the great hall that you are currently in. I'm going to use Druidcraft again and snuff out some of those lights around, like with people around me and just like, just to enjoy like the sunlight going down and hopefully the moon coming up and all that. Uh, yeah, you totally do that. No problem. How uh, how complicated is the music that that gnome bard is playing? Um, I'm gonna roll a performance check for him. Oh, oh god, it's all right. Thirteen. I thought it. Yeah, thirteen. It's all right. Like you know, it's pretty good. Like every once in a while, like there's things that are slightly off key, but honestly, like he's not that bad. I wanna I wanna look to the group. Hey, everyone. Do do you have your instruments with you? No. Uh, what? Do do you play? Do I I forget? Do you play anything? Uh, I'm gonna start looking in my coat if I have <laughs> anything. I mean, if anyone, I I think Bray would be the one who would play. Do you? Uh, n not. I I don't have anything with me currently. Uh, Big John. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's gonna be a no. Oh, it's a shame. I brought my li uh, <laughs> my liar with me. I think I'm gonna go play with him. And I go, I go off. Yes. And, and I'm gonna follow him. As you walk forward, this halfling man it runs up to you, and you can go ahead. And, like uh, I'm gonna move you actually to meet him there. Sorry. Blah, 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 blah. So let's say you made it that far, and this halfling man runs right into you, drunk as fuck, like he's just wasted. And just, he's wearing a corgi mask, and he collides right into you, Lumen, as you're walking towards the bar, oh. and just looks at you, and he's like, uh, how dare you trot on Piccolo, how and he I. takes a swing at you. He takes a swing at me? He takes a swing at you. <laughs> oh, oh. Ignore, that second, ignore that second roll, but natural 20. I don't know why it did twice. That's weird. Um, natural 20. Oof. So that's gonna... <laughs> and then in a second, I'm gonna need you and hence your own initiative. Uh -huh. Where the hell is he? And uh, I'm gonna run over there too, so I'll probably roll initiative as well. Yeah, I think everybody... Yeah, everybody go ahead and roll I, initiative. Yeah, I was right behind... Um... Lumen. What? So he swings at you with his base, by the way. Okay. Well, what is a, what does dodge do again as an action? It does disadvantage to whoever's attacking you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that'll be 1d6 plus 2. So that's oh, uh, 8. Why are you rolling 2 die, motherfucker? Well, that's 8 damage. Oof. That you just took. Um, from Piccolo swinging at you. Um, and he's just, you see him, he's stumbling. Because like, it was a crit? Is that why it rolled two? Uh, oh, maybe that's why. Well, I just did one. I, I'm just going to do six damage. Oh, I guess I should roll a second one. I, mean, I forgot that it was right crit. There, right? What was it? So it was it's on the chat. The good thing is it saves it on oh, the chat. Oh, it's still there. Fun it's six fact. and three. So nine plus two, so eleven. It was eleven total. It's half my health. Oof. <laughs> Josh Sorry. is gonna get one shot. <laughs> right. Sorry, a fat halfling with a base. And I'm gonna make him roll initiative as well. Right. <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ. God. Not Big bad throwing himself early. <laughs> right. Oh. I'm ready to fuck shit up. <laughs> because you didn't want to be a halfling anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so Piccolo is a 19. What's everybody got? Nine. Uh, I was 11. No, I'm just trying to get these bad rolls out of my d20. <clears throat> I rolled 15. 22. Whoo! Lord. 22 and 15 for BJ. Okay. All right. So first up is going to be Kane. You see this small halfling man, like in a corgi mask, like roughing and barking 
drunk as hell, swinging at Lumen, and that struck him like right on the rib cage with his mace. Oh, using a mace now. Uh, I have a quick question before I do anything. Are there people walking around like waiters with drinks? Oh yeah, there's like people all over the place. Like this place is like wonderful. Open. <laughs> I am, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see a little bit better now. Uh, I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, about 30 feet. Uh, as I walk, I'm going to pick up a drink and down it. And I'm just going to have my uh, my hand on my hilt of my gun. And I'm gonna hold an attack action. Uh, see okay. if uh, if he does any more damage to Lumen, I'm gonna attempt to scare him. All right. Uh, you want to just scare him with the sound of the gun? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, next up is Piccolo. He's gonna pick up that mace again and try to swing at you again. So can I fire then the gun? Yes, you can. Into the air. Do do I make an attack roll for that? Um, I don't think you would. Intimidation. Oh, intimidation. 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 Yeah, intimidation. Just because your gun is you real. Maybe roll off his game. Yeah. And then what do I roll for bravery? I'm just gonna do a general charisma check. Where the fuck is he? I keep losing his character sheet. It's a lot better. Uh, 18. Ooh, he's gonna fail that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, he hears the gunshot and just kind of, like, freezes in place. Like, just stops right before he swings at Lumen. He just stops completely in his tracks. And this actually catches the attention of this gentleman dressed all in red comes right up to y'all and uh, he has black hair, a goatee that has streaks of red, uh, of gray and black. He's wearing all black uh, red robes and the mask that's currently sitting on the top of his head. He has pulled it up of three faces. The three faces depict horror, joy, and sadness. And by the way that he, everyone has parted out of his way, you kind of realize that this is your host. He is the one that has invited you to said party. And comes up and stops the fight right there with the sound of the gunshot. And it's like, oh, Piccolo again. I'm going to have to deal with you. Snaps his fingers. The guards come arrest Piccolo, which is the halfling with the corgi mask, on the spot, who's currently still wasted, and walk him outside. And you are out of initiative. So I'm going to blow into the barrel and uh, I'm going to re like reload the gun, restrap it. I'm just kind of nod at Lumen before going to our uh, host and uh, not in down. I appreciate that. Thank you. He really uh, did a number on my friend here. No, I do apologize. Like, Piccolo used to work for me, and now all he does is get wasted at these parties. I am deeply sorry um, for that. Actually, here, and he snaps his fingers, and a servant comes up with a tray of it's a standard healing potion. If you would like to roll 2d4 plus 2. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. Like, in my just my jaw. Four, one, so seven. Correct. So go ahead and heal seven points. Um, no, I'm gonna say as well. Uh, Lumen would also like a, a nice cat lady to go explore a room with, if you can arrange that. The only one we currently have right now is Sewing Needle, but she's currently working. After she finishes handing out masks, maybe we'll arrange something. <laughs> I'm going to shrug at Lumen. Hey. You're doing the best you can. Um, so by the 
essence that you see from this guy, he seems to be very charming, very charismatic. Like he seems to, he starts small talk with you guys. He seems to know a little bit about you. Like he's heard about your endeavors, about your most recent adventure. Um, hence the reason why he has sent you this invite. Um, he, Kane, he seems to know quite a bit about guns. Like not many people do. Uh, not there aren't many gunslingers in this area. Uh, Big John, he just starts chatting about where you're from and like your people. Uh, Lumen and Bray saying he again. He seems to know. It's almost eerie. Like he doesn't know everything about you, but it's almost like he talks to you like he's known you for a hot minute. Um. Yeah. How do you know so much about all of us? Oh, you know, word travels fast, especially in the line of work that you guys are in. You know, if you're helping guys here, we hear about it in Eberdo. We have a great information center here. Where, Everyone talks. Where, where is that information center? Well, it's just word of mouth. Everyone comes in, you hear stories from people, especially with one as connected as myself. Oh. I'm so sorry I haven't gotten introduced myself. My name is Prospero. I am your Marquis de Mascara. Welcome to my party. Very nice to meet you. Likewise. Um, a question for the DM. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me turn into your voice a little bit. <laughs> do I believe him? Yeah, do an insight chat. Contagious. Insight? Mm-hmm. I'd like to do one of those as well. Go for it. Uh, 15. 15? 14. 14. Yeah, like, this is totally his party. He's heard from about you guys through word of mouth. You know, like, that's how he gathers his information. So he has these parties at least once a week, and there's people from all over the world that come here. Yeah, like he's pretty much heard about you guys from said people. And since he thought that you guys were interesting, he decided to invite you over. And he did send you the invite after all, so he was already expecting you. Who specifically knows ab about us? I I didn't think that we were noteworthy. Uh, I can't remember what the woman's name was. It was at a party a few weeks ago, and I mean... We all talk, so we like adventure. Not much adventure happens here in Iberdo, so whenever people hear about things that others have done outside of here, it's just fascinating. Well, Kane's here, so there will be plenty of adventure for everyone. Well, uh, I'm on vacation. We heard you have had a bit of adventure the other week. That memorial out there seems to indicate Oh, that. yes, the Birdman. It was very unfortunate about what happened to him. Did the Birdman have a name? I do not know. He wasn't at the party. We just heard about what tragically happened out in the city square. As he says that, I, I want to quickly look around. Are there any masks of birds? Um, there, there was the finch, right? The finch. So far you have the finch. Go ahead and do a perception check. I mean, I have an owl mask. I just want to know any sort of birds that are owls too. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, out of game, you guys can't see any of these people's names, can you? No. no. Okay. I just can wondering. see this one. You uh, should be able. Oh, I can see that one too. Oh yeah, I can see that too. Ella. Which, which one? Ella. Squirrel bottom Ella right. Squirrel. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. Like. Okay. I just because like I haven't played that when I played this it was like tabletop like in person so. Mm. It's fine. You shouldn't be able to see it, but it's fine. I have everyone's masks right next to their name. <laughs> so that way I know who's what. Uh, bird. Specific you saw the finch. Okay. Specifically one that looks like, because we, we saw the bird out there, right? You saw the feathers. Oh, just the feathers? Okay. We know it's a bird, though. Yeah. Yeah. You saw the feathers that were about a foot long and they were blue. Okay. Um, but there are a couple bird masks. There's a raven. There's a parrot. Um, not anything that would be as big or the same color as the feathers. Is there any uh, bird individuals like the same similar size? Like uh, like Aracocra or Kenku? Yeah, or like the one that would have would have died. You look around and there doesn't seem to be. Hmm. There's no, there's no Aracocra, there's no Kenku, there's no bird humanoid individuals. 
So, I've noticed that there's no... You have such an extravagant individual group of people. There's just no bird people. Is there a reason for that? Some of them just decided not to come, or they might not have been invited to this party. Again, we have these at least once a week. There have been some that attended last week and some that didn't attend the week before. I don't really make sure that my parties have one of every race of individuals in the Forgotten Realms. I just... People show up in their own accord. I invite you. Him. Do an insight check. 17. 17? Yeah, you seem to believe him. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you'll excuse me, though, I have other guests to attend to, so you can feel free to peruse. You guys enjoy. There is plenty of food and wine that you can partake in. Enjoy oh. I'll thank him and close my hands over his and make another flower. As you do, he kind of like, hmm, and pulls his hands away. And before he walks away, you notice that the tattoo that was on the bird man is on him on a like pendant that holds his red cape. You realize that it's his family crest that is tattooed on this bird man. And he puts his mask down and walks away. The eye? No, this was the tooth. Um, there was a two faces. Oh, right, right, right. That were tattooed on the Birdman. That uh, Kara told you was tattooed on mm -hmm. the Birdman. Okay. And now the party is yours to do what you wish. Um, let me describe you real quick. Uh, more things that uh, are further back. So you see the stairs that are over to the left of the entrance that leads down. Um, the hallways that are on the top and the bottom are just servants coming in and out just from the kitchens there's not anything in particular um they're just here serving stuff there's two grand staircases on the very far of the room that lead up about 15 uh yeah about 15 feet to like a second um almost like a look over a balcony i guess is the best way to describe it mm -hmm. okay. um, if you scroll the map on that way you'll see it um and there are three rooms that are back in that far end and that seems to be the whole entire layout of this grand uh hall right as mm -hmm. soon as he like after bray had done the uh the flower thing i just mm -hmm. <clears throat> wait what would we all have seen the the tattoo so on him, it's not a tattoo. It, it's on a pen. Oh, yeah. It's like dead center. It's like right here about the A big, right there holding his cape, the red cloak that he's wearing. So you see, like, he wears his family sigil proudly. Like, yeah. Okay. And it's just a two headed, it's two faces facing away from each other. Almost like the symbol of whore, but it's not a holy symbol. It's just okay. a family gotcha. sigil. Bray, you're such a show off. I just, I like to make flowers. You haven't changed a bit, but did you see? And I'll make a flower and put it in Lumen's hair. Thank you, and I touch it and just adjust it slightly. Did you catch the crest? Yes. We, uh, that that lovely lady Kara was telling us about the the bird. He had that as well. Do you think they're friends? Friends or? newly found enemies i mean he said that the the bird people just didn't show up i i believe him john kane what do you think <laughs> seems a bit suspicious does it not i mean you could totally say that it does seem a bit suspicious uh, why do i even I'm ask on vacation. you and I'm going to walk over to the fortune teller and get another drink. I'm going to peruse around, boss. All right. You, you guys can move your characters, too. I think I gave you access to be able to do that. So yeah. go ahead and put yourselves where you would go and peruse around. Um, where are the belly dancers? The belly dancers are on the very top. They're here. Uh, yeah, correct. And they have owl masks? All three of them have an owl mask. It seems to be triplets. That they all is, are exactly alike. I don't even care about that. I just I'm excited about the owl masks, and I'm mm -hmm. just gonna keep right. making flowers right. and putting them at their feet. Like, they thank you, but they just keep performing. They're there to work, 
so they don't really say much. They just belly dance for the crowd. I go over. I go back over to the 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 gnome bard, and I just begin playing music with him. I listen to what he's doing and try to accompany it with my lyre. Okay. And as I'm doing that, I'm looking around for anyone else who might have a lynx mask. Roll me a performance check just for the hell of it. Nat twenty. Ooh. All right. He rolled that one. Yeah, like he's he's totally on for it. He's like, he you start playing and your music is so beautiful. I rolled to see whether or not he'd be pissed that you're trying to take his tips. Um, and he's not. Uh, he's actually very excited when you start playing with him and just starts going like with you. It's very, um, the devil went down to Georgia. It's just like back and forth. Like you guys play very well together and he's happy about it like he's more excited that you get to liven up the party a little bit more would i see this him. yeah you can totally like, he seems to be one of the main sources of music in this I party. Would, I, I, bray would go over and just start to jump around and dance and and just all willy-nilly in the middle of the dance super, floor yeah just be super okay. free and just do it and i'm gonna put you in the middle of the dance floor there and i'm just gonna yeah. have you just dancing around oh hell yeah hey, uh, right big john where are you at uh, I'm over by Kane having myself a beverage, but uh, I'm just gonna shout over. Hey, Lumen, play that one song. It's good. Yeah, which one? Uh, you know the one that I like. Oh yeah, Big John the song. And I start playing like some. I like it. It's named after. Me. Yeah, and I start playing a song that's basically heavy metal. Okay. And then, just out of curiosity, who's drinking the wine? I, oh, I'm drinking. I've not yet had a drink. Because so, they, they haven't handed us any drink, right? Kane and Big John so far. I'm, oh, just, I'm over by there. I'm 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 a little bit reluctant. I I could because I don't like wine, so I want to see what other options they got. I, I couldn't hear the, what you said, DM. Ten four. I I realized it whenever I said it. I was like, oops, sorry. Um, they mainly only have wine. Um, and there's constantly waiters walking around with goblets of wine everywhere. So you don't per se have to walk up to it. They will offer you wine if you wish to take it. And at any given point, if you would like wine, just say, hey, I take a wine. Because there's an abundant amount of it. Okay, I, w I will not have taken any drink yet as I'm playing with two hands and want to be clear of mind as I play. <clears throat> Each time they walk past me in hopes that they have something different, I pick it up, I sip it, I taste wine, I spit it back out and put it down. <laughs> All right. I'm Bray, you say you haven't drank any, and then I'm Kane, you're drinking. Okay. Oh, Dang. yeah, I'm enjoying myself. I'm on vacation. Time for I'm talking to the fortune teller, gentlemen. All right, so you go up to the fortune teller. Sorry, talk amongst yourselves while I'm searching. Uh, I'm going to get a drink. Would anyone like one? Yeah, I'll take one. Yeah, please. Okay. I'll, I'll do a... Uh... <laughs> Josh wants them too. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, I want a claw, because there's no laws when you're drinking claws. Right? I'll take a Stila. Stila. Give me a Stila. Stila Artois. And can, I have Bray... a, can I have a Glen Roths? 12 year? <laughs> we don't have that. Sorry. Huh? He wants the 12 year. <laughs> Got it. Um, and Bray is just dancing around. Lumen, you're, you're doing so well. Oh, thank you. I've been practicing in our absence. It shows. It really does. You are exceptional. And, and I'll look at the the, ha the what is it? A halfling that's next gnome. to him playing? No. The oh no, a uh, gnome is the one playing the music. And I'll I'll kind of like bend over and like get close and be like, "You're doing very well, just not as well as Lumen," and just start dancing again. Oh, Bray. All right. Well, he gets a drink, and you guys are talking. I'm gonna go over the rest real quick. Cool. I broke the seal. <laughs> That's how the Big John song goes, but with a little like with a little more gent in it. I like that. Wait, can someone someone cheers with me as well? Clinky, clink. Thanks, boys. Just gotta have some cold ones with the boys. <laughs> Good to be back. Saturdays nice are pretty back. Saturdays are for the boys. In the, in park. the park. 
think it, I think it was. Oh, I'm gonna run to the bathroom then, right quick. Oh, you're gonna go too. I want to try connecting my headset because it's USB. Do it. Wait, wait, Josh. Wait. Do you have any idea if that would work? For what? If I connect my headset to his too? Oh, if it's USB, he's only got one USB on that, and it's going to the camera. Cabinet. No, he's got one over on this side. Oh, the only thing. Uh, well, I guess the you might have to mute it. What? The mic. Can you not hear stuff? No, we're just sharing a headphone. Oh, it, so you'll probably have to pick an audio source then. Oh, uh, you're right. So. Yep. Yeet. It's okay. Is there? Yeah. Uh, did, Josh, did you have a? Did you have a problem switching because of Justin and prep and stuff for your artificer? What? What do you mean? Like you're gonna go last, and I'm gonna go in between Mike and you. Oh no, that's fine with me. Yeah, I figured it wouldn't be a big deal, but Justin was like, yeah, if he wants to be that, like, I need a little bit of prep time. And if he wants to be that since we're doing yours last, he's like, I will have no prep time. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I think I'm probably leaning toward the, the Pally Sorcerer, but Ooh. yeah, it sounds fun. Those are coming in the future. I'll, I'll name him Magic Pally. I'm here now. <laughs> Magic Pally. I'm actually, I'm going to do, so, uh, well, everyone's back. Anyway, I'm going to play World of Warcraft, and my paladin's going to be called Pally. Yes. My warlock's going to oh, be called Absidy. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Really I was like, yes. <laughs> All right. Sorry, you were asking me something, Josh, real quick before I had to run out. Uh, yeah, so what, what instrument is he playing? The gnome. He is playing a fiddle. So I would be able to ask him what his name is while we play. Uh, while you play, he tells you that his name is Fiero, F-I-E-R-O. And he has a, <clears throat> he has a, a what mask? He finch. has a finch. It's covered in finch feathers. Okay. Correct. Okay. You know, if our masks were accurate, you and I would be foes. But that does not seem to be the case right now at all. It is a good thing that it is not, uh... Accurate then, is it? Ah, absolutely. And as he he does that, I manage or I, I attempt to like grab a little bit of gold and, and flick it into his uh his money pot. Oh yeah, like he goes he pulls out like the little pot real quick. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. And just continues playing along with you. Yeah. And now I'm just having a good time. Um and then Big John, you said that you're with the fortune teller? Yeah, I'm over. I'm over with Kane while he's talking to the fortune person, and I'm just real upset that there's no actual uh, like oh, meads or liquors or anything like that. I'm more of a spirits guy, so wines are not my thing. That's because you're a cleric. Yeah. So, are any of you getting your fortune read? Yeah, I'll get my fortune read. Okay. So, Kane, you go up to the fortune teller and you see this elderly drow woman wearing the mask of a scorpion. It's kind of like the scorpion pincers are like right here. Mm -hmm. And it's like the body. And then once it reaches kind of the center, it's the tail that sticks out right above the top of the head. Um, and she just comes up to you or you come up to her. She's sitting down on this very like um, ornate fabric and this round circular table and offers you to sit down in front of her. Yeah, I'll sit down. Okay. And so she has a crystal ball in front and does a lot of very like mm. hand gestures. And it's it's very, it's very extra. It's very over the top. Like right. you can tell a lot of this is definitely for show. Um, mm. However, she goes and lays out the tarot cards and puts her hand on one. I need you to do a roll a d4 for me. A d4. Correct, sir. All right. Got a three. All right. So as she starts taking the tarot cards, she starts flipping them all one by one, and she's like, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Your deepest, your deepest fear will soon become a reality. It is a test. Do not cower from it. Oh, I don't cow. We'll find out. I mean, that seems a little bit rude. You just tell someone that they're going to be scared for their life? I do not tell them anything. I read them what the cards say. What the cards say about me, love? Let's find out. She shuffles the deck again, lays them out. Roll a d4. 
You told the cards I'm on vacation. I rolled a four. You have been indecisive about major decisions. The answer is yes. I mean, I don't know about you, but it sounds like my fortune's a little bit better. You've been a doll. Uh, as you. they're doing that, uh, Bray will be tired of dancing and look around for the tattoo artist. Okay. Um, as you look around, you actually hear laughter coming up from the top floor, like from those kind of rooms in the far end of the hall. Mm -hmm. um, where those stairs go up. What you're looking around, there's no tattoo artist here, but you have an idea that it's like, okay, well, if she's not here, then she has to be in one of these other rooms. I'm just gonna go upstairs. I'm not gonna like tell anyone anything. I just, I'm just gonna go. Would would I notice that since he was dancing in front of me? Correct. Yes. Like you would notice him walking off. You would also hear the laughter coming up from upstairs. All of you would. Because again, mm -hmm. even though the music is like at a good, decent volume, it's not over the top. It's not like a rock concert blowing your ears off. You can kind of have an idea and hear quite a bit in this hall. Like a lot of people are talking, but it's not um, a high volume. It's a pretty standard. As I am walking upstairs too, I'm just slowly going to be putting out candles so that there's more and more moonlight coming inside. All right. As I'm, I'm watching him, just one, two, to make sure he's safe because I'm a little suspicious of everything going on. And also a little annoyed that he's turning out all the sun. Because I like <laughs> the sun. <laughs> so Well, the, the sun is like just almost setting on the, no I'm going to say the top of the page of the map. The sun is almost setting on that side. And then you can kind of see the moon coming up from this side, okay. from the bottom. Yeah, of the map. I'm, yeah, I'm just saying that as as someone of the sun soul, all the light that he's putting out is uh, starting to irk me You're a little happy. bit. So I would have went like I would if I was here, I would have went this way, and literally any light from there to here, I'm um, putting putting it right out. If it's candlelight, I'm just going snap, 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 snap. Trying to get as much natural light in into the building as possible. Okay. And as you go, like you realize like it'll be off for a few seconds or so. And then some of the servants will go and start relighting them. Like they don't really seem bothered by it. Like you're not the first one that has tried to snuff out their lights, but they have a routine pretty much being like, okay, our contingency is to turn on the lights when people turn them off. Got it. They do what they are told by their boss. This brings me um. peace. <laughs> <laughs> this brings me I have two quick questions before yes. we move on. Uh, just because I might have missed this. So there's the three rooms upstairs, and then those two carpets leading to the side, those are two other rooms down there, correct? Uh, the, the two carpets that are coming to the sides is just where the servants are coming out with trays, like serving trays. Gotcha. Out of game. I was just too lazy to try to edit them out. And since I copied this map from Google, I have no idea how to take that off. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, you're good. In, in game, I made it so that that's where the food comes out of. Fair enough. So then that this wood thing over here in the top like left-hand side, is that anything? That's the staircase going down. Staircase mm -hmm. going down. Yeah, so on the top left-hand side, that's, that is a staircase that leads to downstairs. It leads to the basement. That one. Oh, true. Okay, mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, no problem. Sorry. Um, so you guys, uh, Lumen, do you follow Bray up? Um, or do you stay kind of still? Not quite. No, I keep playing. I just, I'm, I'm secondarily looking at him, making sure he's like, okay. Okay. Um, and then Big John Kane, after getting your fortunes read, where would you end up going? The bad thing about this one shot is that it splits the party a lot and I have to make sure that everyone is doing things at the same time. <laughs> if, if it helps, oh, no. I... I, real quick before, I, I would like after this to talk to Fiero a little bit, and then after that I would depart. Okay. Right. Cool. I'll let you know, like, uh, once I get what Big John and Kane are doing, I'll come back to you. Hey, hey Kane, uh, what, what do you want to do here, man? That's a good question. Now, I feel like there could be some coin to be made. I'm going to ask the fortune teller, are there any card games going on here? As a matter of fact, there is. There is one upstairs 
Thought I felt my nose twitch. Thank you. You're welcome. Upstairs. Uh, I might not could go upstairs. I'm not one for cards, but if I catch people trying to uh, be a bit of a cheat, I'm not going to be scared to, you know, put my hammer in their face. Right, so go ahead and move yeah, your arrow. <laughs> Cheating at cards. Uh, I'm more <laughs> so saying cheating you. I appreciate that. Because I'm not playing. I, I don't. I can't count. You know that. And as you leave, another attendant comes and goes to the uh, fortune teller to get her fortune read. Well, she's not... passing. Be like, good luck. <laughs> right. Um... Lumen, we'll come back to you real quick as they move upstairs. They're currently walking up. You guys can go ahead and move yourselves. Okay. So you said you want to talk to yeah. Piero real quick? Uh, Piero, uh, what can you tell me about this place? You seem to, uh, I assume this is a common occurrence for you. Um, Every once in a while, yeah, the Marquis will invite me to just play some tunes, kind of like liven people up a bit, um, just play some music so that everyone can enjoy the party. Oh, so he's he's a generous man, then. Oh, he's a very generous man. He pays well, too. And I get to accept tips. Oh, that's that's good to know. Yeah. Now, do you yeah. know anything of that bird person? The, the, one, who, the, bird the one who died person. a few weeks ago. The memorial is out there. Stand by. <laughs> I, I heard about it, but I didn't really get much of the details. I just heard that he had his wings broken as if he fell from a great height. Um, some people say he just didn't know how to fly and fell to his doom. Others say that he was murdered. I don't really know much aside from that. Can I roll inside to see if he's withholding? Mm -hmm. Go for it. Inside. Come on. 15. 15. He seems to be genuine. A shame. Any death is a sad one. It is. So you did not know him? Mm -mm. I don't even remember seeing him at the party. Curious. And he fell in that spot? He... No, I don't think that's where they found him. Like, I'm not sure where it was, but I don't... I think that's just where they decided to put the memorial, hmm. since that was the town square. Interesting. Well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed this more than you know. Oh, thank you, and I look forward to playing with you again sometime. And I, I bow out, and I give him another gold as I go to join, because I've seen everyone go upstairs, so I'm going to meet up with them. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, as you guys, uh, Lumen, as you're making your way up, uh, right before you meet them, you'll see this in about 30 seconds as you meet up with them. You notice that there are three rooms in front of you. Um, from... I'm just gonna describe it on the map. The lowest room on the map, the door is open and you see us, uh, actually, let me show you. Oh, oh yeah, oh, So the door is open to this room. <clears throat> Don't mind the words that are written on it. Again, I put this map together last minute. Um, and you see a group of people just sitting around in a circle on the floor. All of them are wearing masks and there are cards, there's a deck of cards in the middle and they keep flipping a card and it's it seems to be a drinking game like they flip a card something happens they start laughing they take drinks whoever it is blah 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 and then next goes the next person um that door is open then the room just above it uh, I made this room way too big cuz honestly it doesn't need to be that big but um you see a Sorry, where is she? You see a woman sitting in a table, tattooing on the wrist, kind of like a, a rose on another guest in the party. But this seems to be the tattoo artist. And the third room seems to be locked. It is a door that is closed, it is private, it is locked. And that's what you see. <laughs> uh, so as I would have come up those stairs, would I have, I'm, I'm obviously like, would any of the masks in that room caught my attention? 
Let's see. I have a passive perception of 15, so... Where, where are you, Bray? Uh, right here. Oh, okay. Currently. But I would have come up this staircase, so I would have been able to see directly into that room. Would any of those masks been interesting to me? Yes. Hold on. Where are they? So many masks I can, and so I, many I, don't, I can see them, the names. I don't know if you can. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you can see them, that's Do fine. Do want me to tell you? Just so I you definitely know. can, because I can see them too, but I was wondering if Bray would notice. <laughs> no, yeah, like, it, I thought that everyone could see everyone. I don't know what I did with this that I couldn't tell. Like, but if you can see the names, then you have the mask next to them. Yes. So uh, yeah. I would go right up to Aya. Like, yeah, Ray would walk cool. in and go direct, like, oh, yeah. straight up. Go for it. So you go ahead and, uh, here, put yourself just outside the circle. That way you're not in the playing space. Like, right here. Okay. Or here, I'll move you. I got you. There you go. And you see, like, all these people are just having, like, most of them are kind of drunk. They're just having a blast. Deck of cards in the center. And actually, Resmar, right up, like, to your other side, sees you walking in. And it's like, would you like to play? Oh, I'm, I'm not one to partake in merriment of this kind. Thank you. Are you sure? It's very easy. You just grab a cup of wine, you flip the card, and depending on the card, you get to drink. Can I just one moment before I I get to play? I need to talk to this this individual whose mask I I absolutely adore. And I'll turn and look at her, okay. I'll look at her, and just go. Oh, I love your mask. Thank you. Where where did you get it? Uh, it was it was given to me actually as a present from a friend a few months back. Who, who is there any way I could get one like it? I I have quite an affinity with the moon. I'm not sure. It's actually a very rare mask. You is can your, make one. Is, is your friend here? Could I ask them? She's not. I'm sorry. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Okay, and I'm just gonna turn and walk out the room. Well, right. uh, what about the rest of you guys? Where are you at? Um, Would you like to come into the room to play said game? Would you like to see yeah. the guys? Well, me and John are up here. I'm, I'm, I just so, met up with you. Oh, Correct. Right. So we're up here. I'm gonna assume while we're passing by the tattoos, I'm gonna smack John on the back and go, there's your tattoo. Um, yeah, I, I like to walk in in the tattoo lady. Okay, so you're going to the tattoo lady. So I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna move you right here. And then I'm gonna go for the card game. Go for it. I'll, uh, and then, I'll go in with John. Kane, I'm gonna move you right next to Aya. And you're gonna go with John. Yeah. Perfect. I'm gonna be in here. All right. All right. Get to twos. To twos. All right. I guess. All right. Gonna so I'm gonna shoot with Kane first, and then I'm gonna go to you guys. All right. Do it. All right. I'm cool. gonna come in. I'm gonna go. Oh, we're playing a card game. We are. Says Resmar in the crocodile mask. You wanna uh, join? Uh, shit. There's a yellow spotted yellow uh, lizard. Yellow spotted. Answers, yes. Sure. <laughs> sit um, down. So you see that they're playing this game. They try to introduce you to it. It's called Marquise Cup. So pretty much you just go through and you flip a card and they'll go ahead and do whatever it says on the card. I do so have the cards if you'd you like do? to use them or do you want to do them? Oh, you could, you could use them. Go for it. Uh, so you being the newcomer, you get to go next. So go ahead and... Uh, without the jokers. Yeah, no jokers. Yeah. I got a four. By the way, in real life, this is King's Cup. Like, a hundred percent. The rules for this is King's Cup. Oh, I've never King played probably King's would Cup. have seen me walk out of the room, right? 
Mm, mm -hmm. I, I'm very upset. Like, just sour patch face and, like, just come. What's wrong? There's a lady with the moon mask in there, and I, I would like to have it, but I don't, I don't want to ask her for it. Or I'm gonna pat him on the back. Don't worry, I get you that mask. You're the best, Kane. Yeah, and I'm I just know. going to the tattoo, and still moping and sad. All right. So, uh, Kane, what's draw? I got a four. You got a four. You give two, you take two. So players give out two drinks and they take two for themselves. And so you can choose two of these people that are playing to give drinks to, but you have to take yourself two drinks. Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to give uh, Miss Moon Girl and uh, I like uh, Jensa with the skull. All right. So like Jensa goes and downs that drink. And before like the moon, the um, Aya right, with the moon, um, she'll grab the cup and she looks at you and she puts her hand over your cup as everyone is laughing drunk as hell and just shakes her head no. I'm sorry, I thought this was a card game. I thought we were playing a drinking game. Do a uh, insight check. Oh, Jesus, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, insight. That's so, all. Uh, I got a uh, 13. 13? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, she just puts her hand on your cup and she just looks at you like, mm -hmm. like almost like, don't do it. Like, don't drink. Um, do a perception check since you're there. All right. Uh, I got about a 14. 14. Um, you, uh, that's exactly what you needed to roll to. Uh, you notice around her neck that there is an amulet that has the same symbol that Kara had on her hand. Mm. It's that star with the eye. And uh, I'm gonna gingerly take a hand off and kind of nod with the the wine glass and I'm gonna just kind of kind of side profile it and just <laughs> kind of throw it over my shoulder. So good. And you notice everyone else in this room is so wasted. They don't notice it at all that she pretty much does the exact same thing. She pretends to drink it, mm -hmm. but doesn't. All right. I'm gonna keep playing. All right. So as you keep playing, we're gonna pan over to these guys up here. So the three of you with the tattoo artist, um, the woman that had just gotten the rose tattooed on her forearm just finished. It is now cleaned up. And uh, the tattoo artist um, politely asks her to leave now that her job is done. Um, you see, again, this is the bad thing about splitting the party. Uh, the tattoo artist, there she is. She is a tiefling woman with crimson skin, long black ram horns that just are go or just round and black. Um, she has a very ornate mask and it's just jewels all over them. It's not an animal, it's not anything like that. It's literally just think of bedazzled all over it. And actually. In the background, you hear the gong of the clock. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, turn off timer. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it or not. Yeah, a little yes. bit. Cool, perfect. Um, when you hear the clock, you feel a click, almost. Um, everyone do a... Oh god, what was... Perception or investigation, whatever your highest one of the two is. Not by much. Modded 20. Modded 20. Uh, 12. 12, okay. 21. Okay. 8. <laughs> Everyone but Kane, you, you know the sensation as an item being attuned. Something just clicked on you. 
And like we just attuned to an oh. item? You just attuned to an item. And what? Yeah. Yes. Hold on. This is where things get interesting. Give me a second, because now I'm gonna have to do this one by one. Oh yeah. <laughs> big, Yeet. big John, I'm gonna have to send you yours on. <laughs> Who did? Who? Am, I, am I doing so... it right, guys? Just the mask? <laughs> yeah, you're doing a do great, it? Josh. I can't see you because I'm trying to send you stuff. Oh no, that's a good sign. Put that down, Mike. <laughs> Who had this one? Show. <laughs> what, what was that, Carlos? I'm trying to remember who had this mask. Which, Which mask one? is it? Uh, there you go, Kane. So this one's Kane. Yeah, dude. So yeah, I got it. I got it in my journal. Mike, I'm gonna my send girl. you yours in a second. I'm gonna my do yours through Facebook. This one is. Sorry for the delay. Oh, hell this yeah. is Bray. Oh yeah, you got save. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so excited. He sent that to me by. And accident. this one is. Oh, did he? Where are you? Links, there you are. Well, I didn't get anything. Did you check your journal? Did I accidentally send this to the wrong person? Oh, I did. Click the three lines, and then where it says journal, so you'll see the invite, oh, the masks. Sent it to the wrong Wait. No, yeah, Bray, you're blue. Yeah, it's in your journal. Um, three lines. No, the second one. It's the second journal. from the left. The little square with the little square in it. The one that looks like a newspaper? Got it. Got yeah, it. that one. And then, sorry, Mike, you're a boar. Yeah, I got oh, the boar now. Boar, where the hell is it? There it is. I mean, it's not great, but like, it's great. Um, boar, done. Okay, so you feel the items click and attune to you, and you feel these abilities slash disadvantages to each of you. Um, and all of you except for Kane, you're so busy with everyone being drunk and kind of like mm -hmm. wondering why the moon woman is telling you not to drink yeah. that you don't notice the click. The click. Okay. Are, are we going to display everything? The mat, like what it does. I mean, that's that, that's up to y'all. Well, I've I've been waiting to show mine since I I'm the one recording. Oh yeah, like you can show it to like okay. if you want to show like th this is one of those. It's up to you guys if you want to share what your ability slash disadvantage is, or you can just show um, our viewers and not say it out loud in person. Okay, well here's mine. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Everybody wow. knows what Joshua is. I'm not saying about it. Except for us. Yeah. You'll you'll find out when you get to watch it <laughs> in like six months. Um, <laughs> Got it. So yeah, so that that happens. And we're gonna go back to the people with the tattoo. Sorry, I just that timer finally went off. Um yeah, so you see a teething woman, the jet a bejeweled mask, just finished tattooing someone else and acknowledges your entrance. A, um, a tattoo lady. Yes, my name is Zula. Zula, all right, that's exotic, I like it. Um, question for you. Yes? Now, I heard you give out tattoos, which is pretty cool, not gonna lie. Got one on my hand in myself. Um, my question, though, do you do any enchanted tattoos? Describe enchanted. Oh, now see, it's a little bit of a legend that I heard here. I don't know if it's real, but like, if say you use special kinds of like inks or something like that, could give you abilities. I have the ability to, but I do not have the materials in this party to do so. This is something I do personally not in this establishment. Since the tattoos here are free, that is something outside of here that may cost you more money. What what materials might you need? Uh, it depends on what ability you are looking for. Uh, perhaps, for example, like having more cunningness can be five uh, ounces of crushed sapphire dust. 
uh, required for the tattoo or um, to be a little bit more insightful requires like eight ounces of emerald dusk, such as that. There's different stones and gems and will infuse different abilities on people. Well, I see you have plenty of gems on your face right now. Yes, but they are not crushed now, are they? And this mask is far too valuable to do such a thing. But, John, what sort of enchantment were you looking for? (laughs) Honestly, I was just curious. Hey, lady, you can't help me today, but it was a pleasure, Zula. I'll see you later, and I'm going to go head back out towards Kane. This is not how I thought this was going to go. Is it it just the Um, three of us in there? Yeah, the three of you. And since all three of you are in there, do me a favor and do a perception check. Okay. Ooh, first bad one of the night. Ooh. Welcome to my not great. 13. World. 13. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> um, 13. Yeah, I'll give it to you. 13. So you see that she has a sample, like almost like a sample book of like different tattoos that she gives to the guest. Um, And one of the tattoos you see is the symbol that you saw on Kara. Is, has John already left? When I see this? I mean, I would say I'm on my way out. Yeah, he's walking out. He's not out of the door per se. I would say that he is right, where are you? Like right here. And the door is like one more step away, and you're probably like right here talking to her. Okay, Br- Bray, is that you sitting on the couch? Yes. Okay. John, wait. Yeah. And I, I usher him back in. <clears throat> I begin to talk to um, what was the woman's name? Zula. Uh, Zula. 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 I notice uh, in the sample book you have here this symbol, and I and I point to the the eye with the thing. Yes. That the um, that symbol is common, if you know what it means. This is the symbol of the eye of the Aurum. A U R E U M, Aurum. They are uh, celestial creatures from the heavenly realm. They are mortal enemies of demons that call themselves the Malum Animus. The angels and demons have been waging wars for centuries. We in Ibrido have lived among them for many years as this conflict goes on in the shadows. Not many know this. You're very giving with this information. Yes, because I am hoping that one day some outsider will stop this war between heaven and hell so I can finally tattoo in peace. Of course. Well, of course. hey, I'll be happy to be the person to stop that. You said that this is a uh, Aurum? Aurum, correct. This is and the it stops of the, the, is it the, the Malimanimous are the ones that don't like it? Correct. They are the demon side of the flip coin. Excuse me. I'm going to be honest. I'm a man that really don't like a demon, I'll tell you that. Uh, go ahead and slap that thing on me. John, real quick, before you do that, what yeah. is the symbol of the the evil demons? What is the symbol? Do they have a symbol as well? I imagine both sides must have something to represent themselves. As if they have one, I have not come across them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can I roll? I want to just get a vibe for how trustworthy she is. Go for it. Would that be insight? That would be insight, yeah. 13. 13, she seems to be pretty upfront about this information. Um, whether or not she's trustworthy, you can't really tell just because her mat, her face is completely covered up. But by the tone of her voice, as far as you know, she's pretty straightforward, but like she's pretty honest about it. Okay. Well, John, it looks like we can finally get those matching tattoos. <laughs> All right, but uh, where are you gonna put yours? Oh God. There's so many choices. Not on my bum, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, no, you you don't want that. I don't I've done that. it before. Can I go first? Oh, yeah. Bray, you're here as well. 
So all three of you wish to have said tattoo. No, I, I don't want to match them. And like Bray still being all pouty. All right. What's wrong, Bray? Just, I just won't. I won't. There's a lady in the other room and she has a moon mask and I just want a moon tattoo and... You really just want a tattoo of a circle? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. like the moon. So a circle. Yeah. <laughs> the moon can be many different circles. Sizes and shapes. I'll tell you one thing, I ain't never seen no fucking square moon. <laughs> He's got a point Strong. there, Bray. If we if we held ourselves to the things that you'd seen, we'd be very, very little in what we have seen. I don't think you even know what you just said. <laughs> All right, lady, let's go ahead and do this tattoo. So, okay, so we'll go ahead and do John's tattoo, then Lumen's, then Bray's. Um, you guys are, John and Lumen are getting the sun with the eye, or the star with the eye, and Bray, you're getting a moon? Yes. Cool. Okay, John, we're going to jump back to Kane in the so, other room. What I would like is um, to continue playing the game, but obviously as me and... Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot her name. Aya. Aya uh, tossing our drinks behind us as everyone's getting drunker and drunker. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're maintaining eye contact. with I, I know something's up. She knows something's up. So I'm going to... Um, announce to the table this has been lovely of all of you and I, I truly appreciate your patronage and playing the game and allowing me to learn with you but uh, I have been taken quite aback by uh, Miss Aya here and I would like to speak in more private quarters with her if she would most res respectively uh, accept or I'm going to put out my, my hand for her to take and without saying anything, uh, do a persuasion check. <laughs> without saying anything, she said, do a persuasion check. Natural <laughs> fucking 20. That's natural 20. Yeah, without saying anything, she puts her hand on yours and walks yeah. out with you. I would like to, is there like a private area like her and I can be close together? Um, The most private you see... <laughs> I mean, no one's explored downstairs, but the most private you see is kind of like off in the corner, mm. kind of like I, here in the staircase. I have a, uh, a different idea, um, only because I don't trust people. I'm going to go to uh, where the fiddler is. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell him to play something very slow. Okay. And then I'm gonna take her into like I'll put one uh, arm behind her waist, uh, one with her hands, and pull her close, slow dance with her, and I'm gonna mutter and whisper in her ear, "What exactly is going on with the wine?" Okay, sorry, I'm moving you into the center of the dance floor. Um, hold on, let me not move you there. <laughs> I'll put you over here. Yeah. Uh, as as you do this, she, as casually and as sneakily that no one else can notice that she's talking to you, goes, um, the the wine is poisoned. I'm going to, so I'm going to do it like we're kind of cheek to cheek so we can hear each other and kind of mutter to each other without, it looks yeah. like we're just kind of having sweet nothings or whatever. Correct. I'm just going to say, just look like you'd like me a lot. Okay. You mean it's poison? It's poisoned. Anyone that drinks it, give it a... It drinks enough of it. After a certain amount of time, they go unconscious, and then the waiters walk them out, mm -hmm. and no one sees them after that. How many glasses? By what I've seen... Five, maybe six. Well, looking for me, I've had about three, and then I'm going to twirl her, and then I'll pull her back in. Well, Why exactly are they poisoned? I'm not sure, but there's something not right in this party. This seems to be a front, but I can't figure out what for. 
How many times have you been to these parties? Once a month for the past two years, trying to figure out what's going on. Well, considering I'm on vacation, I might have to put that on hold. If someone's trying to poison me, I don't take too kindly to that. Well, it's a good thing you didn't finish five glasses now, isn't it? Agreed. Uh, and I'm going to look at her hands and mine, and I'm going to... Do I notice the tattoo? Um, but she had a pendant. She didn't have a tattoo. Oh, a do I notice the pendant? Yeah, you, you notice the pendant. It's it's not large, but you do. You're so close to her that I'm not even gonna make you roll for it. Like yeah, like it's it's right. a pendant around her neck. Are you related to Kara at all? We've seen each other at these parties. Yes. I'm gonna kind of spin so that way her back is to me and kind of pressed against me so we can look outside at the uh, the rest of the room and we're just I'm gonna try to do like a slow 360 so I can survey the room mm -hmm. what does the amulet mean the amulet is a symbol of the aurum the aurum is a celestial society to prevent the demon side to take over this realm. And mainly here in Iberdo, there's a hidden war between the Celestials and the Infernals. There are those of us that live on the material plane that like it the way it is. So we help the Celestials to sway the balance on our side. And uh, at the the mention of the Celestials and the Demons, my pace is going to kind of slow a little bit just from trying to process everything. So these symbols are around more often. Is this party like a parlay where Demon and Celestial can get together and enjoy themselves? Or is this a way of perhaps picking people off? What do you think? I think it's the latter of the two. I think this party, it's just not right. But we with the Aurum haven't been able to pinpoint exactly what's going on. So we haven't been able to do anything yet. How many other people of the Aurum are here? The only one that I know of as of now is Kara, but we don't openly advertise each other just for fear of being discovered by the darker side. Might want to change your, <laughs> your logo if you're both wearing the same mark. I'll keep that in mind. So, where haven't you explored yet? There's been a couple places. We haven't been able to get into the Marquis' bedroom. Hmm. And I'm going to twirl her back around and be like face to face. So there's an opportunity of taking a very beautiful woman to a bedroom that's normally locked. You're flattering. Oh, I never flatter. If you show me where the room is, I can get us in. It's right over as she kind of like leans back with a dance mm -hmm. and kind of points as if it's part of her dance movement. Yeah. And points up to the room above the tattoo up here. Got it. It's um, the opposite of the... So yeah. where the, as opposed to where the card room is, it's on the, the other side. It's mirroring the card room, correct. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep saying, as long as we can keep the charade up, as people are looking at us, we should probably look like we like each other a lot more, huh? Whatever I give you a hint that I didn't like you. <laughs> I'm gonna roll inside on that. That's Not right. a lot of people like me. Um, can I, while this is happening, I feel like Bray is getting annoyed with <laughs> waiting for the waiting, tattoo. Waiting for the tattoo. The, the moon mask doesn't have any information. So uh, they are oh. going to. Oof. 
there, uh, Bray is going to come out and look for, uh, look for, fuck, I forgot your name, Justin. Kane. Kane in the, in the room. Not seeing him, he's going to go back out and kind of survey. Would he see him and her or there's a lot of people. So there's a lot of people Do a perception check real quick. Uh, and. Ooh, that's not great. Uh, eight. Eight. Yeah. There's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in his frustration, Bray <laughs> is going to thunderclap from the top, from the balcony and just like silent, try and silence everything. Or at least, uh, like, get everyone to turn and look at him to see if he can find Kane. The music stops. Everyone's just staring at you. And I'm just, I'm looking for Kane. Kane, do you make yourself know where you are? Well, first I rolled a 14. <laughs> she, rolled a, she rolled a 1, so she seems to be very into you. She finds you very... Is actually into me? Yes. Hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Charming as fuck. Uh, I'm going to pull her kind of close by the waist. And I'm like, I have no idea who this man is. <laughs> All right. You don't see Kane. And, and I, I'm going to go back into the, the room with the card people and ask if anyone has seen him. All right. Or As you do him. this, the marquee kind of like looks up, rolls his eyes, and tells the musicians to keep playing and they start the music back up. Um, so I'm going to lead her up to where the locked door is. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to say we should probably not make this obvious that I'm picking this. So I'm going to have my back to the door and just kind of make it look like I don't know how to make it look like we're not breaking into a door but I don't know just trying to be inconspicuous okay. and I'm going to pause you right there so while you're figuring out how to break in here being inconspicuous I'm going to jump back over to uh, the tattoo room real quick so she's finished doing both of your tattoos uh, Lumen and John so you guys, uh, where did you get your your symbols at? Where did um, where did Kara have hers at again? Kara had hers on the palm of her hand. Um, I don't want to be that um, that obvious about it. I'm gonna put it on my chest. Okay, so uh, just like right on your pack. Same. Yeah, and then I got my chainmail back on again. Right. Um, and Lumen, you're gonna do. I'll say that John, you went first. So like, I was uh, you got the tattoo on while Lumen has been getting his tattooed. You've been able to don your armor back on. Um, All right. So Lumen, you said you've got yours on your chest Same. as well. Left chest, kind of creeping onto the shoulder. Perfect. All right. Um, so yeah, so you guys' tattoo is done. She looks around for the other elf and Bray, are you coming back in or are you staying in the other room? Uh, I would have asked about Kane and if anybody had seen where he went. Okay, I'll jump up to you then uh, after I finish with these guys. Cool. Um, Lumen and John, do you have anything you want to do? Um, I'm going to go over to Zula and be like, all right, Zula, thank you kindly. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you a gold piece just for your troubles. I appreciate you. She takes it. And uh, we'll go ahead and outside of that, I'll say thank you very much. I think I got some other things to attend to. And I'll walk out and I'll see Kate because I, uh, I thought I heard some bustling. Okay. And, and then we'll get to that in a second. Uh huh. Lumen. Yes. And as he does that, I walk up to Zula as he walks out and say, um, "I'm very interested in these enchanted tattoos. Is there any way that I can get in touch with you after the party?" Well, I'm. I reside in Waters Deep, so go to Waters Deep, ask for Zula, and you'll be able to find me. Wonderful. You do amazing work. Very detailed Thank lines. Thank you. And I, I also pull out a gold piece and I hand it to her. Okay. She takes it. I also wouldn't mind those jewels. If... Nope. These are mine. Not for sale. Are you sure? 
I'm positive. Can I roll persuasion? You can try. <laughs> Yo. Can I also use, so my Lynx ability is a plus five on persuasion. Ooh. Okay. That's your mask? Yeah. Sure. All right. Guess what, boys? It's a nat 20. What? No, you did it. It's a nat 20. <laughs> Yo. Oh my God. Get that shit. <laughs> That's your mask. <laughs> uh, why are you breaking the game already? All right, I'm a roll. No, oh. I thought I was going to do it. All right. Um, she doesn't give you her mask, but she looks at you and smiles and reaches into a box on the side. And has another one and hands it to you. Oh, you've made me so happy. Since you've been such a great customer. Am I getting am I getting vibes off her? Like fucking. Yeah, like fucking. <laughs> like, Do an insight check. Okay. <laughs> Not 20. Yo, what the fuck, Josh? I mean, she kind of likes the attention. Like, you, it, it's not so much like fuck me vibes, but I'm, she's like, I mean, if you're going to give me the attention, then I'm going to take it. There's no one else in the room, so. Okay, then, like, then I... She would kick you out of bed. She just wonder how you got there. <laughs> Fair. Okay. <laughs> then I, as as I uh, take the mask, I, I take her hand and I reach it up to my mouth, give her a quick kiss, stare into her eyes and say, I will find you in waters deep. I look forward to it. And I slowly let her hand go and walk out the room. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump over to Bray real quick. So, Bray, you are asking around for... Kane. Kane. Um, so you're asking around, and you notice that all these people are sloshed. Like, there's a, like two of them passed out on the floor. Like, there's another one, like, making out. Like, uh... What is it? Jessica and Resmar over there are making out. So the skull mask and the crocodile are just like going to town. Um, there's not really much information you're going to be able to gather from these people. They are like wasted. However, do me a perception check. Mm, please roll well. Oh, 19. 19. So as awkward as it is seeing this like skull and crocodile mask make out, you're looking at the guy, the Resmar, and you start to see that, like, the same shade of green that his mask is, like, his skin is slightly green on the back of his neck. And you're, like, curious about it. So you start doing the same thing, and you start feeling that there's feathers on the back of yours. Okay, Bray isn't sure if he should be excited or concerned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> Why not both? Um, and he's going to uh, say, he's before he runs out, out of the room, he's going to look at Jensa and Raz, Resma and go, that would not happen in nature and, and run out of the room. <laughs> All right, uh, and he's going to look for anyone that he knows. Yeah, which is these guys there. up here. Right before everybody joins you, Kane, do me a favor and do a sleight of hand to see if you can get this door um, without anyone knowing. While I do the sleight of hand, am I hearing like commotion and people like like starting to move? Um, you. Uh oh! <laughs> Shit. I'll do your thing first, and then I'll do this. Okay. Um, okay, great. With the music of the party, like you right. do hear that there's conversations going on with Zula in the tattoo room. Um, you, you know that it, the drinking room, the card room, isn't as loud, just because you don't know this yet, but two people are passed out in there, and the other two are making out, so there's not really much mm -hmm. commotion in there. Um, like, 
but you do know that people are like kind of like moving around and stuff. Things are starting to die down, but I hear the the thing with Zula, right? Yeah, like you can't hear, tell like, exactly what they're like, saying. I can hear like, Big John moving, and yeah, you can tell the kind of like their tattoos are done. Like you can almost be like, you know, you can hear them thanking her for like the tattoos and stuff. Okay. I'm gonna go shit, shit, shit. They're gonna be coming here and they're gonna be like, okay, okay. Um, we're gonna look like we're busy now, and you're gonna kiss me now. Are you saying this to Aya? Yes. Am I? Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna pull her in for a kiss, and then while my hands are behind my back, I'm gonna pick the lock. All right. Uh, I mean, you rolled like crazy earlier, so yeah, she's gonna. Go for it. And so she's just going to be kissing you right there while you're doing that. So it's a sleight of hand plus my uh, proficiency? Correct. Because you are proficient. I check the, um, it just, you have to tell me what the the thieves tool check is. I would assume it's sleight of hand. I, I think it's sleight of hand plus proficiency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's sleight, if you're proficient in it, yeah. It's sleight of hand plus proficiency. Got it. Uh, that is a 19 plus 2, so 21. 21. Hold on. G. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm sorry. 22. It's, uh, no, no, no. I'm right. I was right before. Sorry. Oh, yeah. 19 plus um, 2. Yeah. So, like, you go and, like, you've I'm ran my eye way. out. <laughs> You've run like uh, into locks like this plenty of times. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, this is a standard E500, whatever brand block, blah, blah, blah. And you just goes and unlock it right away. This isn't the first time I've had mm -hmm. a woman on me while picking a lock. So, nope, not at all. Uh, um, no, it won't be the so, last. Uh, you look around and you seem to have done this pretty stealthily that no one else has really noticed that you just broke into the host's bedroom. And oh, yeah. no, or you at least unlocked it. Yeah. Yes. Would I have gotten outside by the time that this had happened? I would say by now you spot um, Kane kissing this beautiful, well, beautiful woman in a moon mask. Um, you don't know that he's unlocked the door, but you do see him with a woman. Oh. And, uh, by, by now, I would say that all of you are together. Okay, you dog. Actually, while you do this, I'm gonna get a drink. Hey, whatever. I, di I didn't say that. I'm ignoring John. <laughs> Kane, have, have, have I walked Kane. out at this point? Then, yeah, I think uh, he just said we were all together. Okay. Oh, Kane. Kane. I'm gonna say you're all moon blocking me right now. And. While they're all just like looking disapprovingly, I'm gonna slip my uh, uh, pickpocket tools back into my coat and wrap my arms around. And yeah, I'm busy right now. I'm on vacation. Real quick, uh, I was not mm -hmm. disapproving. I was very excited for you. I'm disapproving. I know, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. <laughs> I want to make out with the moon girl. No, I want her mask. Well, maybe I'll get I, it down to a mask. Hey, what's up? We, we have a problem. We have a problem. Oh, Look, perfect. And I'll turn and point to the feathers that are coming out of my neck, back of my head, whatever. Wait, you're not shifting or something into like an animal like you normally do? No, this is, this isn't me. I, it I, is me, but it's not me. Bray. I the back of my neck. Do I look like a pig? Yeah, you got, you got a boar. Um, Bray, you look at the back of uh, Big John's neck, and he doesn't have anything in the back of his neck, but you start seeing his teeth are slightly longer than, like, it's almost slightly half orcish. Like, his tusks are starting to grow in almost. Um, and when you were pointing out the feathers in the back of your neck, you feel around and you show them. And there seems to be way more of them. And when you go like that, your head seems to pivot further than it normally does. We have a problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. Oh, no. 
Um, I don't, I don't see a, I'm just gonna, you, I, I'm gonna open the door and just slowly slink, like, and then I'm gonna check my neck. Wait, so you're, he's in the door now? I'm going in the room. So we see that. Oh, yeah, like you're right there in front of him. Um, but I'm gonna take her with me. I just, I'm gonna follow. Bray okay. is not happy. How do you turn into a moon? Is she gonna turn into a moon? I like a moment before everyone starts to storm the fucking gate. <laughs> nope, no shot. Bray is coming in. <laughs> so you're all examining each other um, and seeing like what the fuck is going on. And on Big John, like I said, you notice the tusks start growing in and his nose is starting to push in a little bit. It's starting to get more squished. Um, on Kane, yeah, you start to see like you start to see like his ears are starting to point, and there's like orange fur coming out of the ends of them, and his nose is starting to turn black. And Kane, do you have any facial hair? Uh, I just have kind of like scruff. Okay, so your scruff, you're starting to notice that there's like whiskers that are slowly growing out. Um, um, Lumen, your your elf ears have gone gray and there's like tufts of black fur about a few inches long on the ends of them. And you feel something uncomfortable on your backside. You're starting to have a little bit of a nub of a tail coming out. Oh no. I pull down I pull down my pants just so that everyone can see the tail. I'm kind of looking around at it. You look and it's not much, but it's like a little a little nubby tail is starting to grow. I told you. Told me what? We have a problem. Ah oh, shit. Hey, hey Kane. Kane, Kane, I'm knocking on the door very real quietly. <laughs> Kane. Um are you not inside? Well, he does that. <laughs> Can I look at Aya? Aya Aya's looking at you all and she's like, did you all put on the masks given to you at the party? These aren't yours? No, we we didn't. We were <sighs> given masks. You should have brought your own masks. You were invited to a masquerade. Why did you not bring your own mask? I'm not very creative or crafty. <sighs> are, are, we, are we all in there or is it just you? No, all of you are in there. That's what I thought, okay. Yeah, oh yeah, let me open that room, actually. I, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to, Bray's going to come up to the door. Kane, if you don't open this door. We're already inside. I'm going to open, no we're not. We're not, he is. You are. No, well, by now, you all are. Oh, we all are now? Yeah, sorry, I totally forgot to open or reveal the room and move you guys in there. Bad DM. Great DM. Bad DM. <sighs> No more. <laughs> so here, I'll move you in here, Best and then related. I'll describe it in a second. Oh, is that a bearskin rug? You're gonna be real mad. <laughs> gonna be real mad. Right. You are in the room, Prospero's room. Okay. Um, this room is very large. It's impeccably clean and lavishly furnished. There is a tall mahogany bookshelf lined with books um, that look like they never have been read. Um, the books are all of religious texts about gods and worship, uh, gods worship by the Orum. Several swords with different designs, a scimitar, a shashka, and a saber are off on the far side, mounted on the wall. Uh, to the left of the room is a floor to ceiling tapestry with a three headed beast, a chimera. A large window on the back wall is covered with a silk curtain. The view is of the lagoon beyond. I'm gonna close the door behind all of us as everyone spills into the room. Is there anyone else in the room? It's just us? Just you. I'm going to lock the door. All right, so uh, we weren't exactly supposed to be in here. There's obviously stuff afoot. Uh, why did were we supposed to bring our own masks? So that this, which is what we and the Aurum expected was happening, wouldn't happen? 
Okay, how do we get this off? I'm taking the mask. Oh, okay. You can't take it off. It is on. Apparently, when it attuned, it is now on you. Shit. There is no I didn't agree to off. nothing. In my frustration, I go to the other books, the books that are lining the wall. Okay. Is there anything? So you, is there anything of interest? Um, you're looking around, and a lot of it seems to be very much the same. It's all religious texts about the Orom. It's stuff that you've already kind of like heard about from the other people. How about the Orom is um, the celestial side of this ongoing supposable battle between good and evil in this region of the world that not many people know about. It's a battle happening in the shadows. Like it almost seems like fairy tale, but so far by what you've heard from both Aya and Zula, like these fairy tales don't seem to be much of fairy tales. Like they seem to be pretty legit. So there's no point in me trying to read all the books. I mean, you can try, but that's pretty much all going to be the same, the same thing. Okay. Yeah, right. it, doesn't, it doesn't have much information about details or any detailed battles, just because this is a supposedly a thing that's happening, but not many people believe it to be true. It's just all, um, all you know is like the gods that the Orum worship, but not anything too in-depth about the battles and who's in charge and how to stop it or anything of that sort, no. Uh, Bray is literally like laying on the bearskin rug, like petting the bear and apologizing. And he's just like, you didn't deserve this. I'm so sorry. No. And as do an investigation, or not investigation, because you're not intent in looking for something. And uh, perception. Perception. As you, pet the, as, as you pet the bearskin rug. 18. 18. And as you're petting the rug, you look at its claw. And you see that there's like a ring on the claw of the rug. I'm gonna go and like try and take it off. Do a strength check. Uh, that's gonna go poorly. Look, it's on there. Oh, okay. Uh, that's actually not <laughs> terrible. Natural 18 minus 2, uh, 16. Jeez. You pull, you're able to take the ring off, but it takes off the claw as well. Um, but you're wondering if, if you couldn't get the ring off without the claw, like how in the world did this ring get on the claw in the first place? And by your process of elimination, you can kind of gather that this ring was on a person before and that person turned into a bear and the bear is now dead. So this used to be a human or some sort of being. I whip around and look at everyone and go, we have a problem, we have a problem, we have a problem, we have a problem. Yeah, we know that we're turning into animals. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Point in my ears. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> this is your fault. Oh, I'm sorry. How was that? I tried to get a hold of you earlier. And that was going to prevent us from turning into animals. Maybe. Do we know that gonna... we started turning once we attuned? Uh, you noticed it now that you've been attuned to the atoms for a while. You notice that every time that the bells chime more and more of you is starting to go. It seems to be a progressive. The longer you wear the masks, the more you're turning into whatever animal you're wearing. Shit. So now you have it's been twice that the bells have gone off, so by now it's about 9 o'clock. Oh, no, it, they went off at 8.30 or 8 o'clock. It's It just hit 8.30 this past go around. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to turn and look at um, Aya and go, you knew that this would happen. You're no. not wearing an animal mask. We speculated that and this would happen and no one told you to wear the mask I want here. my eyes to start shifting into like a wolf's eyes right. and go, you better start talking before you can't anymore and just start getting like more guttural and more like a growl as I'm getting ready to be shaped. But as you do that, she starts holding her hand and you see like the beginning stages of a sacred flame in her hands. And I'm like, don't try me. I'm gonna I'm not my pistol. What? Uh, 
and I'm going to cock it. I'm going to say, we all need to calm down. Real shiny like. <clears throat> and I'm going to jump. Uh, <laughs> I like to jump in here. Um, Just because I haven't seen Aya before until now. Um, do I notice anything about her in particular aside from the moon mask? Uh, do a perception. All right. And as you do this, she notices Lumen that you don't like. She notices that you've been hurt and that you're not 100% healed up. So she's actually going to go up to you and kind of like, you can trust me and put her hand on you and heal you for. Stand by, hold the show. Six. The first one. The first one, not the second one. Six points. Cool. I don't know why it keeps rolling too. I don't understand. When when she does that, do I see her hands? Oh yeah, like. So I, I can see the. It's an amulet. She doesn't oh, right. have the tattoo. That's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah she's That's wearing. What I'm essentially looking for. Okay. She's wearing an amulet of the Orum. Okay. So you say I noticed that then. Yeah, all of you by now notice it. It's not very much hidden. Like it's not obvious, but it's not hidden. Uh, so I kind of gesture over to her. I appreciate you healing me, mate. There, I would have done that too. Just saying, yeah, but you know, good job on you. I see you got the symbol of that Aurum on your on your on your little necklace there. I just got a tattoo of that over there by the Lady Zula. Nothing like getting tattoos of things you do not understand. Well, she gave us a pretty good idea, saying that it's something along the lines of it protects us from demons. And last time I checked, I'm not a big fan of no demon. Well, that you're right about. Frankly, right now, thinking about how things are going, how I'm turning into a fucking bull, um, I'll take any protection I can get, considering I just don't really like many things right now. All right. Wasn't really expecting tonight to end this way. We need to find Kara, and we need to find our most gracious host. Well, I don't know where Kara is. I'm pretty sure you can find the host downstairs. Uh, Bray will storm out and again do a thunderclap from the top of the balcony. <laughs> oh, okay. going to know in here. Um... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say to Aya real quick. I'm gonna be like, when I get this mask off, like, we can like come back to this room, right? <laughs> she just looks at you and starts, starts, starts laughing. Um, all right, so Bray, you're gonna come out here. Oh, um, oh fuck! <laughs> I love that every time that I play this game, that's always like everyone's like, ah, oh, shit. Um, all right. Uh, before you walk out, Bray, like, you feel something weird with your face, and you feel that you're starting to get a little bit of a beak coming out. Um, and your eyes are getting slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. um, Lumen, your feet are starting to shrink up a bit. Your toes are now, like, Almost pause. It's not hindering you in any way yet, but you're starting to turn. Um, Kane, mm -hmm. your skin is starting to go that reddish orangish color. Yeah. Um, and uh, your ears are now full on. It almost looks like an extension of the mask. Like the mask is mm -hmm. like here, and now it almost looks like the mask is now is melding and melding moving. with the ears. Um, John, like your hands are starting to almost go cloven. They're not there yet. You still have fingers and you still have dexterity, but you're starting to go in that way and your skin is starting to go that grayish brown color with just fur going along your arms and your neck. And now you have full on tusks in the bottom and in the top. Um, Ray, you're gonna go out, do a thunderclap. Thunderclap. While you do this, because you actually notice it is a hundred feet of sound. Oh yeah, oh yeah, which encompasses this whole entire uh, 
room. Fuck yeah, it does. But the moment you do that, though, it was simultaneously, you hear a woman screaming. We're going to change this. Yep, things are going to happen, y'all. Get ready for it. They've been happening. <laughs> it's true. What are you talking about? <laughs> <that>? <laughs> So as you do that, where are these people? Who are you? We're gonna oh, dead. this guy and this guy. Perfect. Um, we're gonna throw you guys away out of here. I wish there was quicker ways. Uh, they're they're going to be right here in a second. They're in the DM layer. I'm throwing them to the token layer. Boom. Um, you notice that da- there was a dragonborn and a half fork down there earlier have now completely started fighting. Um, There, now it's like a dragonborn, like mixed with, what the hell are you? Sorry. A dragonborn mixed with a tiger. So it's almost like dragonborn with like orange skin and stripes all over him. And this half orc has started turning into a lizard and they have just gone completely feral. They are going at it. They are like in full on fighting mode, um, just pissed. And right next to them, you just see the marquee laughing his ass off, just enjoying the show like thinking this is the funniest thing in the entire world. As you do the thunderclap, he just looks at you and smiles. Um, I'm going to stand on the railing and go, you need to give me some answers now. I need to give you nothing. As, as I hear the thunderclap, I run out to back up Bray. Your, where do you want to go? Like right there? Uh, I got it. I can do it. Perfect. And you can rotate them too. You gonna move, John? <laughs> yeah, prosperity about to hit for me. Uh, I'm gonna have you guys move to where you're going, and then we're gonna roll for initiative. Just because I, I figured uh, Prospero is right here, and actually, he would be more like right here in okay. red. Um, um, I would be there, but I'm going to hop down, but I'm going to wild shape as I'm going down. Before you hop down, we're going to roll for initiative because you start seeing Prospero's red cloak and um, everything start melding into his shape. And all of a sudden, you just see that he's starting to shift. So let's roll for this real quick. Strong. (laughs) Uh, oh. oh my god. Okay, I got modded 20, but I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, he rolled a net 20 on an issue. I think now would be the time yeah, to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Anyone else? Natural 20. <laughs> I created two. Natural oh, one. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, you're good. Yeah, I think we're all going to go. Oh, yeah. Gonna, now's the time to go. I'm so good. I'm going to pee. I have a lot. I'm just going to talk to Mike here, you That's know, while, uh, three or four. while you guys go pee. Yeah, hey, what's up? How's it going? Good, how are you doing? So, you know, I'm just hanging out. Yay. So, just for the, any of the viewers that are watching this, so this one shot came through um, DMs Guild. So, if you guys would like to uh, play this, it's actually on there. Um, there's many of them on uh, there. Not, we're not sponsored or anything. It's just a great place to find just like random one shots. They can do anything from a level one to a level 20. Um, this one seems a pretty fun one this one ties in a lot with the history of um if anyone has ever read the mask of the red death um that has to do with the plague and the different masquerades and the mask and everything in there with different rooms this is very similar to that it's actually based off of that um but yeah sorry i'm just like can you tell that i'm just like filler 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 (laughs) no no you're good I was gonna go ahead and jump in actually just because you're saying that because it's funny you mentioned dm's guild because mine is also from DMs Guild, so my one shot is going to be the next one that we're going to be doing. Don't know when it's going to get posted, but um, mine is done at level six. It's called the Low Crater, oh. and um, it's uh, I got it on DMs Guild. It's from a company called Winghorn Press, um, so I'm real excited to uh, to do that. DMs Guild again, not sponsored, but DMs Guild is really cool, and uh, I read through okay. a couple samples from other one shots that winghorn does and it seems like they they uh make some very fun content so oh, yeah. i'm really excited to play that one shot it'll be my first time dming 
So um, I look forward to you guys watching me cry on camera <laughs> again. Oh, that, that's the best. And like, it's cool because like, please definitely support your like artists and writers on there. Because a lot of these people, for example, the one that I, this one was free. Um, yeah. She does have some that you can pay uh, what you wish to donate. And then there's others that she has that are like, okay, this one's going to be $10. This is going to be 15 so on and so forth. So obviously, depending on the content and the size of the one shot is whether or not it goes from free to however much it is. Um, this one actually had the ability yeah, to- dollars $2. Oh, really? Um, this one had the ability to also get the maps on Roll20 along with it um yeah. for a certain amount of money but since i had already made the map i was like oh well i'm just gonna go with the one i make but nice. yeah what, what did i miss while i was gone uh, uh we were just chatting about dm's guild uh, you didn't miss anything we just went into initiative like i haven't gone in game oh, we were pretty right. i didn't, I didn't we check were, out dm's guild because yeah. i like my one shot right uh, now is all level. like made by me but i feel like i need mm -hmm. to tell because i've never done it before yeah it's it, you'll notice like that's why i'm like if you guys are actually going in a very good pace i think we're gonna be i think like if we're slightly behind schedule because of the technical issues that we have but we're pretty much almost on schedule where i wanted it to be so so yeah i think we're actually in a pretty good place hopefully you guys are enjoying it oh definitely oh i'm, I'm having, having a great time, time. yeah it, it, it's interesting so no laws with the claws. Um, you have no because you're an owl. Oh my god, it's so great. No, it's not. That's, That's so raven. <laughs> <laughs> no, the raven is downstairs. The raven. I wish I, wish I would have made it so that you guys could just see everybody's name and mask. It was just easier doing it that way because I was like, I'm not gonna remember who the fuck I'm <laughs> <before>. for. <laughs> because trust me, on this, it's like a list of like 30 people, and like. Um, yeah, like, it's just a list of everyone in their mask. I remember what I was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We all back? Yes. Yes. All good? Okay. Get ya. So, <laughs> your host rolled a natural 20 with a 24. I also rolled a natural 20. Hell with yeah. A with a 24. My uh, dexterity is um, a plus four. So you and him are matching, okay? 24. Going to go. The plus four, too. Correct. Oh, wow. Damn. Okay. So both of you match. Um, next up, uh, 25 or 15 to 20. Uh, I got 20. 20 for Lumen. Uh, Bray, what'd you roll? Uh, a natural one. Oof. <laughs> for a for a full. Okay. I rolled 12. Big John has rolled a 12. Yeah. John, Bray rolled a four. My and actually, I just realized that I have a couple more things I need to roll for. Oh. Jeepers. I can't see seven. God damn. <laughs> so I'm going to go last. 17. So that's going to be 18 for this guy. And... Sorry about that. I should have done this while you guys were in the bathroom. You're okay. It's cool. Uh, that'll be it. He'll be going with John. Okay. Cool. All right. So first will be your host. So as you're about to jump off of the banister, Bray, you see the host start shifting and changing. And you see, like, wings coming out of his back. Uh as he uh, starts to morph. Everyone roll me a religion check. <laughs> um, I'm a, just the worst talk, cleric ever. Because we talked about oh, it a 17. little bit. Ooh. 17. Do I recognize what he's turning into? That's what I'm rolling for. Six. Do I have an advantage on that? Because I've seen something like this before. Go for it. Okay. I rolled a seven. <laughs> Um, religion, I rolled a 10. Okay. Um, I would say anyone with a 10 or above, you would know that this is a Cambian. This is a fiend. Like, he's 
straight from the Nine Hells himself. Great. And he is just maniacally laughing and sees you guys just coming at him. He's like, oh, this is going to be fun. And snaps his fingers to the tiger, dragonborn, and the lizard half-orc and points straight at you. And now those two look at you. Um, He is going to use his action. Uh, He's going to use his movement. He's going to flap his wings and he is going to move back here to watch the show. He's going to be about 20 feet in the air. Just crossed arms, just enjoying watching to see what happens. And that'll be his turn. Next up, Kane. All right. So I'm going to look at him, recognizing what he is. I'm going to take off my coat uh, and I'm going to draw my pistol out. And I'm going to say to him, this isn't exactly a smart idea when it comes to me. The smart idea would have been not to accept my invitation. Well, you promised me with a good time. Oh, I'm having a great time. But you see, I am marked already. And I'm someone else's property, and they won't take too kindly if I'm harmed. Who said I was going to harm you? You look yeah. really pretty in order. I'm gonna up my sleeve, and I'm going to show the uh, the mark of the uh, the demon that claimed me, the Baylor. All right. And with that, I'm going to fire twice at him. All right, go for it. My gun. Uh, Jesus, take the wheel. Don't take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> or let the wheel go and we all Well, die. you know, I'm demon stuff. Uh, so, modded 20. Modded 20 hits. And then I'm just going to do the other shot. Yeah. To fire both off. That's a natural one, so it jams. Oof. Mm. But I'll roll the uh, the first one, so that'll be uh, ten points of damage, piercing damage. All right. With the gun jams. Now, is your gun magical? Um, I got it from my demon. Would you consider it magical? Mm. That's a you call. I guess because you got it from a magical entity. I would say for the purposes of this, yeah. Okay. So let me do that. <clears throat> 10 points of uh, piercing damage. Got it. And then you said the jammed after the second one? Yeah, the, the gun got jammed. Gunslingers. It happens. So I'm going to duck behind the balcony and I'm going to deal with that on my next turn. Perfect. Lumen, you are next. Okay. So I'm, I'm reading Radiant Sunbolt, and it's saying that when I take the attack action, I can use one key point to make the special attack twice as a bonus action. Does that mean if I use Radiant Attack once, I can use it twice as a bonus action? Yes. Does it specify like what kind of attack action, or just as attack action? Yeah, uh, just as attack action inside Radiant yeah. Sunbolt. Then I would say that, for example, like you can throw a dart and all of a sudden go. But then I can do Radiant twice does it it doesn't matter what attack i do correct okay so then i have 40 points of movement how high up is this balcony uh 15 feet 15 feet so if i if i drop down does that take 15 feet i mean you're a monk i would make you do an acrobatic check okay then uh it was higher okay then yeah i want to i want to jump down go for it Nat and it would only take five movement. Okay, nat 20. Oh, yeah. Like, you literally, like, Superman. Like, not Superman, like, the superhero land. Just <laughs> up and... Superhero landing. <laughs> superhero landing. Okay. You, that was only five movement, so you still got 35 movement. Okay, so... I think he's 20 feet up. He's 20 feet up? Correct. Okay, so I'm going to move around these guys. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And that puts me 5, 10, 15, 20 away from him. Correct. And if he's 20 in the air, would 30 feet still hit? Oh, yeah, he's within 30 feet. Okay. Is, is the bard still here? Uh, by now, actually, I should have done this. By now, all the people that 
are here that have not started like shifting, going crazy, are freaking out, screaming. The bar is off on the side. Everyone's kind of like cleared the center and ran to the side and noticed that the doors are locked so they can't get out. Okay. Um, so he's here, but he's just freaking out with everybody else. Okay. Uh, I just, I, just to get a gauge of who's around, I look and then I just, I use my attack to do radiant sunbolt at the okay. demon. Go for it. That is a natural twenty. Oh my god! Yeah. So you can either do uh, times it times to die by two or roll two. Up to you. Uh, sure. I'll roll it twice. Sure. sure. Okay. Uh, I muted us. Go for it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I didn't. You're unmuted now. Shit! Oh, I thought I did. Did I do it? <laughs> no. Nope. Oh. I can still hear you. I can't do it. <laughs> I wanted to do it. Hold on. Okay. I got three. And a one, so four plus three radiant damage. Seven. Oh, minus. I almost said plus. Minus seven. All right. I'm, I have like three calculators open on the side. Okay. Uh, and then I will use my my two bonus my bonus action to radiant bolt twice at him. All right. So go for it. Is it twice or is it just a second time? The way that it was written, it sounds like it's the attack and then two radiant. I'm just gonna go at it like that worst case scenario like you read it next time you play this character and it might be one yeah but it says you can spend one key point to make the special attack twice as a bonus action so you might be right Pat. it would it, yeah it, it sounds like you can do it twice like it would be this is the second time almost like uh flurry of blows yeah 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 like i guess if it plays like flurry of blows and yeah like it would this would be the second time i guess okay yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, then just I, I, not thinking about it. The other way is really OP for a level three character. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I got a fifteen. Sorry, Josh. Oh, that's fine. I got a. Uh, oh, sorry, I got fifteen. So that's a modded twenty. Oh, yeah, that just hits. Yeah. All right. Uh, four radiant damage. Four. Yep. Okay, so minus four. All right. So yeah, so the, the two sunbolts, like they just, one of them hits him in the right shoulder, the other one hits him like um, in the rib cage, and he is not happy with you. He just snarls at you as he's flapping his wings. He's like, oh, just wait, just wait. Um, you, anything else? Uh, nope, that's everything I've got. All right. Um, seeing as uh, next up is the Tiger Dragonborn. Um, seeing as he has no one else around him um, that he can get to, he's actually going to come towards you, Lumen. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20. Um, and he is going to... I need to put a bookmark on these people. Come here. Mask. There. Um, he is going to... Okay, uh, he is going to bite at you. That will be... I can't see that die. It's hiding behind people. Same. It's a natural 15. 15? <clears throat> yes. Okay, so that is a modded 20. Hits. It's a hit, all right. So that'll be, I said a bite, right? 1d10. <laughs> oh. I have my health. Oh! oh. That's 10 damage as he comes in and just chomps right on your shoulder. Um, and yeah, that's all he can do. So he's going to stay where he is. Next up is Big John. All right. Um, question for you, DM. Yes, sir. If I, just because I'm not like familiar with casting spells, you guys remember I was short. Yeah. I hit stuff and that's it. Uh, um, if I cast a spell at, say, first level, at but it's a bonus action to cast, mm -hmm. if I was going to cast something else, it could only be a cantrip, correct? Correct. Yeah, you can't cast two spells. Anymore. That's just what I wanted to clarify. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So what I'm going to do is to start. Um, how f about how far away am I from uh, the little demon boy? Where are you? You are over here. Yeah. Uh, 55 feet. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a uh, 
small piece of paper that I got in my in my back pocket. Gonna whip it out and just go ahead and rub it on my armor real quick and throw it down. Oh, uh, ruin both of us. <laughs> talking. And uh, <laughs> sorry, I wish I had a headphone. Um, and throw it down, uh, casting Shield of Faith. All right. And so that's obviously Shield of Faith is going to give me a plus two bonus to my armor class. And then what I'm going to do is, since I'm within range, I'm going to cast Toll the Dead on uh, Demon Boy. Uh, yes, you will. That's a wisdom save, if I'm not mistaken. That is a wisdom save. Wisdom save. That is a fail. What do you roll? Natural a six. Five. <laughs> six in total. Oh, uh, right. wisdom, yeah. then six with that, uh, he's going to take uh, six points of necrotic damage. Okay, minus six. Cool. And then I'm just going to yell, hey, Damon boy! Piss off. <laughs> You're laughing now. Just wait. That'll be a turn. My turn. Cool. Uh, next up is the orc. I'll be right here, guys. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> really oh shit! Actually, I totally. You know what? I'm gonna put this person in blast. I forgot about this one. <laughs> this oh one. good. Oh jeez. Oh, awesome. there's another one. Ooh. Great. That's no, fine. You'll be fine. Whatever. It's fine. Um, so the orc is going to. There's not really much you can do. So he's gonna go to the nearest person that he can. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Um, he's going but to. But it won't be in vain. <laughs> he's gonna try to bite you as well. And keep in mind, he does have pack tactics. You should have patient defensed it. What was that? A three and a what? I can't. Oh! That might miss. Uh, 15? <sighs> that hits. Oh. oh. Fuck. That'll be a 1d8. Oh, he's or, rolling so well. You are not. Uh, eight? Okay. You're still up? Barely. Okay. Um, did you not heal yourself when they gave you healing potions? I did. No, he, he did. He was health. at full health. And he was healed by uh, Aya, too. God damn it, cool. man. Bray, you're next. I'm going to be very upset that I didn't get to attack him as a as a man and I'm going to be very upset I'm going to look at him and say you sir better leave my friends alone <laughs> as I reach into a pouch on my pocket and I pull out several uh, moon seed moon seeds and I drop them on a piece of uh, feldspar and I cast moonbeam on him all right. Hold on, you're making it do work. Geese. Yes. Yes. We're gonna go with. This looks like a moonbeam. Why not? Oh, you can't see that. No, just kidding. We're gonna go with this as a moonbeam. There you go. Yeah, that works. Yeah, that works. It's a little golden ring. What and I'm going to take my movement to go uh, right up right here right to this bench area go for it or here i can move you because i know that you just went to the measurement tool yeah there you go um yeah and uh that's going to end my turn all right let me look. Okay. Moon Moon doesn't do damage until it... It's his turn. Yeah. It's the beginning of his turn, if I'm not mistaken. Big brain boy turn. All right. Next up, you see... What does more? What does more? That does more. Okay. Um, From the corner of... Kane, right behind you comes this beautiful woman that you just were making out with. Does a bunch of hand gestures and goes like that. And she is going to um, 
cast a flaming sphere. Fireball? Fireball? It might be fireball. Is it a flaming spear? It's a flaming spear. Oh, that's a thing? That's a thing. Okay, I'm learning. Yeah. Where? It's going to be <laughs> at Kane. What? <laughs> Uh, the target that ends its turn within five feet of the sphere must make a dexterity saving throw failure blah, blah, blah. Half as much as I Okay. Um, yeah, she's going to put a flaming sphere right next to him. And it's going to slam right into him, causing him to take 2d6. I'm going to tell her I'm so attracted to you right now. Seven fire damage however he is resistant so four and that'll be the end of her turn next up is the cambion so he must he has to take uh make a constitution save okay Oof. That's that'll a be a 13 that is a f- uh oh actually that is my save dc oh, that's that a success. Sense. so he takes half damage if i'm a, if i'm not he does. that's nine points nine points uh, actually the sh- if it's a shape changer it makes the saving throw with disadvantage so this is his true form yeah i wouldn't this isn't his shape change this is his true form okay then yeah, he just takes half damage, but it's radiant. So it's whatever you have. I don't know if you roll up, you go up or down, but it, it was nine points of damage. I roll up. Okay, so yeah. five points of damage. It's not halved. Yeah, oh, you yeah. succeeded on the. Oh, that's right. I did. Succeed. You succeeded, and but it's nine, but it's also radiant. So I assume that I don't know how life works. <laughs> the radiance doesn't seem to be affecting it any differently than it would normally. Okay. Yeah. And then you just leaving the moonbeam there or do you want to like move it or pass it through anywhere? Uh, oh, no. I can't do that Sorry. right now. Sorry. Yeah. It's, it's his turn. Um, being pissed with this moonbeam there, he's going to move. Wait, I need to move the moonbeam to move him. I want the moonbeam back. <laughs> He's not too thrilled with the people in the balcony. He doesn't really care much about this one down here in the bottom. Oh, good. Yeah. Like he's he's noticing that over there, there's spellcasters that are fucking him up, too. Um, how far away are you? Oh, yeah. You're within range. Uh, Bray? Yes. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Um, okay. Give me a second. Okay. Make sure that my... Okay, that was con checks. Cool, cool. Uh, wisdom, you said? Wisdom. Wisdom save. Correct. Ooh, that is upsetting. Uh, wait. Okay, uh, nine. Nine, that's a fail. He's going to look at you and say, you know, it would be more fun if you were on my side. And he's going to have you betray your friends. And now you see him as an ally. Can you hear things? Mm -hmm. I can't hear things. You can't hear things? I can't hear anything now. Oh, Oh. pause. Yeah, I only see your picture. I don't see you. you I can hear Carlos. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you too. Hold on. You guys keep talking. I'm gonna refresh real quick. Uh, okay. might, have been, might have been the hotspot thing. Got gotcha. you. Guys can hear Carlos, right? I think he can hear me, right? Me? Josh? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a hotspot thing. They're refreshing. Um, while they refresh, uh, you are currently charmed, and you are ooh, now. Ooh, I have advantage against being charmed. Then roll again. <laughs> Wisdom. Uh-huh. Nope. All right. So (laughs) you are currently on his side for the next 24 hours. Fuck. Sick. Hold on. I can't make a save to get out of that? That's what I'm reading right now to see if that. So what happened? I'm charmed. 
and Good. he has me against you guys. Good. <laughs> there are times where you will make the save, but it's not every time it's your turn. Okay. Anytime you take damage or you are told to do something harmful to yourself, you can re-roll the saving throw. Okay, so anytime I take damage or am told to do something harmful to myself? Like if any suicidal, like... Go fuck yourself. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do I have to also make a con save for the Moonbeam? Yeah, you would. No, you wouldn't, because he didn't take any damage. Oh, you're right. You didn't, you're just charmed. So my um, Moonbeam is still up. Yeah, your Moonbeam is still up, and that'll be the end of his turn. Next up. Kane. Uh, I'm going to use my uh, turn to unjam the gun. Okay, so you go in. My head is kind of like hiding behind the banister. Uh, and I'm going to look at uh, Aya and say, I'm so attracted to you right now. <laughs> That's nice, but there are very good things to worry about right now. Yeah, I know. So if you go unjam. <laughs> nice. Oh, is that for your gun? That was for the gun. So what I'm going to oh. do is, as my bonus action, actually, I don't need it on a bonus action. I'm just going to reload the gun to four chambers. Okay. And uh, I use my action to uh, unjam it, so I have to wait. Can action through for the bonus action? Fun, fun. Cool. Next up, Lumen. Oh, boy. Okay. So let me double check this. Okay, so I'm going to use I'm going to use the cantrip uh, thunderclap to attack Ooh. my two foes. Okay. Which, uh, save. Yes, it is a save of con con twelve. Con twelve. Cool, cool. So this one is the tiger dragonborn. Oh. It's a 14, fourteen, and then this one is the lizard hybrid. That's a thirteen. Killing me. Okay. I know. Well, that's my job. Neither of them have negative to con. <laughs> Do they? Because they're beefy boys. One of them. It's a plus two, and the other one's a plus two. Gross. Ooh. Okay. Well, then I will use one of my key points to use um, Step of the Wind, disengage, and run away as far as I can. 10 4. Uh, where would you like to go? You have 20, 40, 20, 30, 30, 35. If, if I'm here, can I count this as as half, as like half hidden, hiding behind the banister? I'll give you, I'll give you half cover. Okay. Yeah. And can I yell something, or is that mm -hmm. okay? In celestial, it's what? It's a free action. Okay. Then in celestial, I'd like to yell, "Help us! Now's the time." Just in general? Yeah, just just out, out. In Celestial, though, since the um, the eye of whatever. Okay, I'm going to roll for something. Ugh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, I got the mask at least. Cool. It's going to be really good on your corpse. It's going to look so good. It's so hot. <laughs> All right, next up is... It's totally not going to take it. <laughs> Uh, the tiger is saying that you ran away. He's mad. How far? Uh, you know what? The tiger is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Face up above the banister. And I need the three of you, Aya, Kane, and Big John, to do a dexterity saving throw as he breathes in and breathes out a 30-foot cone. Oh, no, lie. It's a line. Oh, it's a line. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, it'll be... So who's he going for, then? Is, uh, he can't get somewhere to get Big John, so it's going to be Kane and Aya um, to do a dex save. For a uh, lightning breath. Oh god, it hit behind the thing again. I can't see it. Six. She fails. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Carlos is gonna kill us. Man. Well, Carlos is gonna kill you guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You're gonna kill them too, though. Yeah, right? do, do we? We don't know that he's charmed, do we? Yeah. No, you have no idea. Um, where the hell is the dragon's breath? Oh, there it is. Two d six. Don't worry, it's a lot. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Oh yeah, that's not bad. So you guys take seven damage uh, as lightning shocks you through the breath of this creature. Let me move this girl out of my way. I need her to get the hell out of here. Thank you. Uh, next your up, ass. move your ass out of the way. Uh, next up is John, Big John. Alrighty. Uh, let's see here what we're going to do. Um, you know, <clears throat> so many options, so many options. Sorry, sorry. Um, Clarence. <laughs> yeah. Welcome um, to my world. Where is Luminate? Oh, my candles went out. Son of a... I actually have 15 AC, which I think would have saved me before. I mean, it's too late now, but I just realized... No, he rolled a 15 on you. Oh, did he? Yeah, I think it was... Okay. Oh. Where's Lumen? Oh, there he is right there. Oh. Uh, yeah, Lumen is over here. 25. Isn't that him? No, that's the uh, Drow fortune teller, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and move over by Lumen. Okay. Do you need me to move you or are you good? Uh, yep. I got him. Alright. Actually, uh, no, I'm not gonna move over by Lumen. I'm just gonna stay where I'm at. Never mind. <laughs> and um, <laughs> for my bonus action, I'm gonna cast, uh, I'm gonna look over, it, over to him and be like, I got you. And uh, I'm gonna cast Healing Word. Thank you. And, um,. That's going to be six points of healing. And then, um, M, would you say that I'm within... Uh, uh, actually, no, I am within five feet of the tiger guy. Yes, you are. You're 15 feet up, aren't you? Oh, yeah, you're 15 feet up. Never mind. Um, then, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look back over at Demon Boy and... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to toll the dead once again. Okay. And so theoretically, I totally forgot that you're 15 feet up. Aya would not have been in the lightning breath, Kane. Uh, that would have only been you. Oh, that's it's fine. So she's going to get hit. Sorry. Thanks. Big job <laughs> again. Sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I did my healing word as a bonus action. So I'm going to go ahead and toll the dead again on uh, Prospero. Wisdom saving throw. That is a. Let's find out. Natural 15. Oof. That's a uh, 16. Uh, then, uh, yeah, he's he's all right. Fine. I mean, it's a cantrip, thank God. <laughs> it's an OP yeah. cantrip, but it's still a cantrip. And then, are you going to move or stay where you are? Um, I'm, uh, I'll use my movement to. Um, just back up a little bit. Alrighty. Uh, next up is the half orc. Where am I? There he is. Um, he is going to. He's very melee, and there is no one he can hit right now. He's going to use his movement and his action to go five. 10, 15, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And that's all he can do. He's coming up the stairs. Uh, next up, Bray. Uh, I'm going to mutter under my breath, what, what would you have me do? Attack my enemies. Uh, and fuck, man. Uh, I'm going to. What's move... the distance? Huh? What's the distance of Moonbeam? I can move it 60 feet on an action. Keep in mind, since he does have you compelled, you're going to want to not hit him. So that Moonbeam might have to go around him the long way. As long as he's not in it at the start of the turn, it doesn't matter. 
I think it's anyone that enters this the moonbeam for the first time. So you can literally just when a creature enters the spell's area for the first time or starts its turn there, it is engulfed in ghostly flames that cause searing pain. Must make no, it doesn't say anything at, like uh, about that. Yeah, because when it's because when it sweeps through, that means any creature that you're hitting as you're moving it for those sixty feet, mm-hmm. that would be them entering it for the first time. Even though you're continuing, it doesn't mean that they stay in its side. So you can literally sweep through and hit every creature within a 60 foot line and all of them have to do a save. Got it. I had this and it was super OP. Okay, but my intelligence is a minus one, so. (laughs) Is that Pat's or uh, Ray? No, I mean, that's that's legitimate. It's it's a minus one. Go for it. Uh, I don't. You can do it. Like, I'll roll for my, do what Bray would do. I, if his intelligence is minus one, he probably wouldn't think about that. Yeah, uh, then he's just gonna drag it through, over to, and he's gonna put it right here on top of, on top of Kane. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't reach Aya. Uh, no, it's only in a five foot radius. All right. So as long as he's not the Cambian, because it goes through him. That is a four. Uh, 13? 13 is my spell save. Okay. Because this is wisdom, right? Uh, it is con. Oh, that's like 18. Oh, well then, yeah, he's fine. <laughs> so he still gets halved, right? Okay. Yep. Nine points of radiant damage. And Kane, I need you to do a... Uh... It's at the start of his turn. Oh, true. At the start of your turn, you'll do a deck save. Nine, you said? Mm-hmm. So five... Five, yes. Okay, you've knocked them down to half. Accidentally. <laughs> I mean, let me move the moonbeam. So now the moonbeam is here. Yes. Cool. Uh, Aya is coming up next. Seeing you don't look so well, Lumen, she's going to run over to you. And I, mean, I wonder if her thing is a distance or if it's a touch. Cure wounds is distance. If it's or sorry, healing word is distance. If cure it's cure wounds, wounds is touch. It's, touch. it's neither one. I think it's a celestial warlock ability. Oh, I can heal wounds. Okay, so then it's. Um, I think it's range. touch. Is it range? Mm-hmm. Okay, then I'm gonna. If it's range, then I'm gonna move her back, and she'll do it from a distance. She can heal you one d six. So she's ugh. <laughs> You heal one hit point. All right, better than nothing. <laughs> She's got two of those left. Um, yeah, that's all she can do, really. Uh, I'm going to have her actually move back. And I'm going to say that the door of this room is this couch right here. Like, because there's no door to okay. this room. So, uh, next up is the Cambion. Um, he not being happy with y'all. Who looks still pretty intact? Does he take any damage for oh. being near the sphere? Yes, he does. Is that at the beginning or at the end? When it ends its turn within five feet of the sphere. Okay. Got it. Um, it's fine. Like fire doesn't really bother him. Like I'm not going to have him move. He's right. still going to take that damage. Um, he is going to shoot a fire ray. What's the distance? Okay. Um, Yeah. He's not happy that this bitch is trying to, like, heal everyone, so he's gonna go for Aya. And, uh, let's see. 1d20? Natural nine. Natural nine. So that'll be a 16 to hit. The ray goes flying towards Aya, and last minute she moves, and it slams into the wall right by her head. Missed. Completely. 
Oh, y'all, it's not easy to hit her. Uh, next up is Kane. All right, let me make my con save. Yes. Yep. Oh, wait, the flaming spear. Oh, do the flaming spear. I'll do this as well. Why is that the one time you rolled well? <laughs> I rolled pretty well. Your passes. I take full damage. Uh, 12 points of radiant damage. <clears throat> okay. God damn it, why did it do that? I'm very fucked up. <laughs> oh, no. I'm gonna stand up. Oh. And I'm gonna look at you. And I'm gonna go. You're gonna cut that shit out now. And I'm gonna move one, two, three, four. I'm gonna point the gun. I'm gonna shoot twice at uh, our demon friend. Okay. Oh, shit. That. A lot better. All right. Uh, first one's going to be. Uh, sorry. It's going to be 19 to hit. 19 just hits. Jesus Christ. Holy fuck, Knuckles. Okay, I'm going to use my bonus action to shoot again. Shoot again. Uh, that was an 18. 18 misses. That oh, just goes right by him. So that's okay. I'm going to use my action surge and I'm going to go again. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to shoot him again. Uh, two more shots. I don't know if it's two more shots yet. Cause is it, is it, oh, because of the potential of a jamming. Right. All right. So that misses and then I'll shoot again. See if I can at least get twice. Uh, no. So I'm gonna do my D10. So the first shot goes. Uh, so the first shot is the one that does the most damage. So it's gonna be uh, six points of piercing. And then I'm gonna duck back behind the guard. All right, so as you shoot at him, you go. <laughs> the first one goes through his wing. And with that, he flinches and you don't expect that movement from him, making the um, other bullets just fly right by him. I, no, I didn't have it. Never mind. Uh, okay, and then I'm gonna duck back down and uh, reload. Okay. Uh, and then that's part of your. What is that? A bonus action? I don't know how gunslinger. So I have um, cross the crossbow feet from the variant human. So uh, I have. I think it's a free action to reload. Okay. This is my first time playing with a gunslinger. So it's, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. You use an attack action and attack with one. Uh, you can use a bonus action and attack with a hand. That's why I'm attacking twice. I actually, maybe I don't have that yet. I mean, if, if it's, I'm not going to fault it. It's fine. I don't mind. Go for it. It's a free action to reload it, at least for tonight. Uh, and you are up. <clears throat> Who's up? Who's up? Lumen. Oh, hmm. me. Okay. Um. So is everyone still situated? Like, I, I, it's hard to tell what everyone is. Uh, I is over here. Bray is over here. Kane is over here. And Big John is right by the flaming sphere. Or not the flaming sphere, the moonbeam. Okay. Um, uh, Tiger Dragonborn is down here. And then the half orc is running up the stairs. Uh, the opposite stairs that you are in. Um, okay. Going up. Okay. So. What is considered a um, monk weapon? Anything that is finesse. Anything that's a uh, simpler finesse. Pretty much anything you're proficient with is considered a monk weapon. Okay. Because I think then if I use a dot, Hilaire. if I use a dot, I can still attack again with a dot as a bonus action. It just says it has to be a monk weapon. Because you can go, you can throw two darts, one with each hand. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to hop up on top of the the banister that I'm on okay. and just throw two darts at uh, the demon. Okay. Go for it. So, oof. That is a nine. Oof. No. <laughs> and an eight. Good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. It's almost like they're following the same trajectory. You just, just misguide, miscalculate it. Mm. You still got your bonus action if you want, or your movement. Oh, is that not my bonus action to to do the second attack? Or do I get two attacks? 
Oh, you're at level three, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, th th I think it would be your um, it'd be your bonus action to be a second. Oh no, uh, bonus action is to do a second attack. Yeah, you're right. I think it's a I think it's a melee attack. It's a unarmed strike is your bonus action. Oh, so I could do that again, right? So it would have been one dart and an unarmed strike, or one dart and two unarmed strike with a key point. Oh, yeah, okay. so you could have only thrown one dart. Yeah. Okay. Regardless. I missed, but, yeah. For feature. Okay. Yeah. Then, um, yeah. yeah, I'll uh, kind of just move back a little bit. Oh, I can't move. Hold on. Click on the arrow. There we go. Um, yeah, just so I'm slightly further back. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so next up is the tiger. Or... Dragonborn Tiger. He is going to for your sense. <laughs> Dragonborn Tiger. Yeah, he's he's wearing he was wearing a, a tiger mask. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20. You're gonna be the first one that he can come up to, but he can't do anything because that was his movement and old yep sweet so that's all he can do he's just trying to get up to someone melee uh next up is john big john all right uh gonna try and help you lads out kane you know what to do i'm gonna no, five i don't know 10, what to do <laughs> 15 20 25 i'm gonna come over towards where the uh the half orc all right Okay. Towards where the half orcs coming up the stairs, so that way I could try and keep them away from you. And uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm going to uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my hammer, and I'm going to kind of like whirl it around. And while I'm whirling it around, I'm gonna go ahead and then throw it out like this, and I'm gonna cast guiding bolts okay. on, uh, on on Prospero, the little prick. On the Prospera, where's Prospera? It yeah, well, can't be in oh, areas. Right. Sorry, I was thinking of Piccolo. Piccolo was the the first drunk ass motherfucker that you fought. Uh, <laughs> go for it. Can you can you blow a little bit? I need... No, you've been missing stuff. I don't want you blowing on it. <laughs> it's okay. I missed anyways. <laughs> I rolled a thirteen. All right. Uh, yeah, the guiding bolt just same thing. He's really slippery. Noticed. <laughs> he's very good with his yeah. wings. But he's not looking great. <laughs> he would have looked really fucking bad if that guy had bolted him. Alright, is that the end of your turn? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so now you got the half work lizard hybrid. He is gonna go 5, 10, 15, right in front of you, Big John. And he is going to attack you with his maul. He's going to take a maul and swing. That'll be... Natural nine. Mm -hmm. 14 to hit. Uh, that does not hit. That does not hit. So he tries to hit you with the maul, but you're able to move out of the way just fast enough that it just smashes on the floor. And that's now, question. Yes. Um, in order to use a reaction, do I have to be hit? Depends what what the reaction is. It'll state it on the. Because uh, I'm going to use my reaction, Wrath of the Storm. Ooh! Oh, you're a storm cleric, aren't you? You're a tempest, aren't you? Yes, you bet you. You bet uh, you, sweet no, ass, I am. Does it say that as a reaction you can use it? It doesn't say. When a reaction when in combat when a creature within five feet of you that you can see oh never mind it literally says hits you with an attack there you go i was gonna say it'll say it on the reaction Fuck. fucking hell <laughs> fucking hell almost so cool yeah which kind of sucks because I'm, I'm i'm very hard to hit right now bray you're up <sighs> you're i'm upset. This is Big John, right? Big John is 
is right here. Yep, that's him. Be the case. I'm going to bring it here through Kane and then over to Big John and that's put the moonbeam on him. Okay. I'm going to give you the ability to move it, by the way. Hold on. Oh. That way I'm not the only one. Controlled by. Uh, go ahead and do a, uh, what is it, dexterity for the both of you? Con. 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 Save. Okay. Ray, you should be able to. You don't have to roll yet, but John. Oh. It's on the start of your turn. Please succeed. I got a 16. That's a success. Uh, Four, half to two radiant damage. Oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pat, you should be able to move the moonbeam now, by the way. Okay. You'll, you'll yeah, have control of it. Um, cool. I'm not good. Are you, staying, <laughs> are you staying where you are? Are you still up? Barely. Barely? <laughs> I All rolled right. so bad. I was like, "Yes!" All right. Uh, next up, if you're if you're good, um, I'm gonna have Aya sees Kane not looking great, I, and he I use a blood <laughs> heal two damage. So you heal for two. Oh, great! I'm back <laughs> where I started. <laughs> That's her Harbinger's Harb. What? How do you Harbinger. say that word? Harbinger's light. Is what it's called. Mm -hmm. Harbinger's Light. Uh, and she's going to stay where she's at. Next up is the <coughs> the Cambion. Fuck, he has so much shit to do. I fucking hate this. I fucking hate this. Well, because you can't do anything. I can't do anything. I can't make you're a just, save. I'm gonna gonna yell. Someone fucking take care of Bright. We don't hear that, yeah? We can, we can hear that. I screamed it. I'm just taking chill. <laughs> um, because you're you're all the way over here, right? I guess that's not too far. That's kind well, of far. fifty feet. Tell you what, that's not. I'm bad. gonna roll d4. Fifty feet's like nothing. Big John, you're one. Can be uh, Kane, you're two. Lumen, you're three. Aya is four. Oh, it's hidden. I think it's me. Three. <laughs> Lumen, that's you. So he's gonna go ahead and try to shoot at you with a uh, fire ray. That's a natural four. Good. So question, is, is that the ray is like a line, right? Yeah, it's like a beam of energy. So it would also hit the enemy in front of me. This one only hits the one person though. It says one target. Damn it, okay. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> missile, but it's an eleven to hit. Uh, nope, fifteen. Yeah, so that yeah, this time you kind of like you've seen him do this before, and you move out of the way, and it catches the tapestries right behind you, and that'll be the end of his turn. Oh, he has to do a dexterity saving throw. I forgot that that fire flaming sphere was here. Oh, oh, he passes. Natural twenty. Why is this so die? Fuck you, die. Well, I'm not 20 and you got a 36. I think he succeeds. <laughs> All right. He takes four damage from the flaming sphere. I'm going to have to move him out of there soon. Uh, next up, Kane. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, use my ability second wind. Yeah, you are. D10 plus two. <laughs> Roll that D10. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeet! Uh, seven is better than nine. Seven plus two? No, that's with the two. Oh. No. So I'm at 11. That's not too bad. And then I'm going to use my action to shoot once. Do it. At the Cambion? At the Cambion. Oh, right. Uh, no, I don't hit it. All right. Uh, I'm going to duck back down under the balcony. So you shoot, and same thing. He just... By now, he kind of has an idea like what your game is. So he always knows to expect that he's you're just going to be dodging your bullets. Uh, next up, Lumen. I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry. 
my bad. Move. And I'm going to five, 10, 15. Um, can two people occupy the same space? Depends on the race. So, like halflings, gnomes can occupy the same. I think it's a small and a medium creature can occupy the same space. So I'm going to move by Bray. And I'm going to duck down so at least I'm slightly covered. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? No response. Crap. All right. Next up, Lumen. Okay. You're currently in melee with this dragon-born tiger hybrid. Okay. Um, so I have two weapon fighting, which means if I attack with my main weapon, I can use my offhand. So I could have, I would have had to use two separate weapons to attack the guy. But I'm going to attack this whatever he is with my short sword. Okay. Go for it. So this is your main weapon first? Yep, 23. 23 hits. Oh my god, yeah, hits. Hell yeah, dog. Uh, These aren't hard to hit. Uh, four points of damage. Hell yeah, dog. <laughs> 24. Frick yeah. Four. Frick yeah. These guys are, are not wearing armor. Like, they were party guests. <laughs> so these are guys are not hard to hit. Uh, okay, then I, I will use my uh, bonus action to attack with the dot at close range. Okay. Is that disadvantage? No. Uh, well, I mean, unless you've changed. It's it's a melee, so I would do because doesn't a dart do the same damage as unarmed strike? Uh, yeah, but I have to use. I think I have to use a, a weapon, don't I? Well, you can do an unarmed strike as a bonus action. Oh, okay. Then yeah, I'll just do that instead. Yeah, monks monks have the ability that it doesn't cost you anything. You can always like attack. And your uh, bonus action is an unarmed strike. If you use flurry of blows, that unarmed strike turns into two unarmed strikes. Gotcha. Okay. Then yeah, unarmed strike, which will be eighteen. Oh yeah, that hits. Okay. And that's gonna be seven points of damage. Ooh, that was a hell of a punch. He does not look great at all. Um, cool. Do you want to stay where you are? I mean, if I move, I'm going to get attack of opportunity. Yeah. So. You would. That's up to you. I think I got to just stay here and hope for the best. Hold tight. All right. Uh, next up. Tiger. The Dragonborn. Uh, seeing that you just punched the hell out of him, he's going to go ahead and return the favor with a bite, he's gonna try to bite at you. Uh, Lumen, that'll be a the first roll because I don't know why this thing is rolling multiple times. What is that? A twelve? Does not hit. Where, <laughs> plus. Oh no. Yeah, he has plus five. That's a seventeen. Oh jeez. Oh, this could be it, boys. One uh, d ten plus three. Oh, that's a 10. I'm down. You are unconscious. Does I have anything right. reaction-wise I can use? Nope. Nah, bro, you dead. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and put fucking A. Dude, I'm gonna put this little red dot, meaning that you're unconscious, next to you. Um, and with that, he's going to move to the next closest person, which is... Ah, yeah. Cool. Next up is John. Big John. Roll a con save. Oh, yeah, you're in the moonbeam. Yeah, you do. Moon beam. Uh, 16. 16. Failure. What'd you get? A nine. 16 points of radiant damage. Oh, fucking hell! Moonbeam's no joke, y'all. Get the hell out of that moonbeam. <laughs> yeah, uh, clearly. Um, 
So, how far away is, um, how far away am I from Lumen? From Lumen? 50 feet. All right, well, there goes my first levels. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast Healing Word. Okay, roll a 1d4 plus Wisdom. Uh, full seven, all right. All right, so Lumen, you feel the life come back to you. You are once again in this game. And then what I'm going to you're do... Still uncon- you're still prone. Right. And that takes half my movement? To get up, okay. correct. Yeah, and then I'm gonna, that was a bonus action, so I'm going to use my action to uh, take a two-handed swing of my Warhammer at um, this half-orc in front of me. Do it. All right. That's a cool thing. Uh, 18 to hit. Oh, yeah. All right, and then uh, to D10 because I'm doing two-handed. Uh, that's uh, two. Pl- that's four points of damage. Okay, first blood. And then I'm going to use my movement to get as far away as I can. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and then uh, since I'm small, could I get in the same space as uh, as as uh, Bray? I don't think tours are considered small, though. I think you're still considered a medium it's also creature. A, uh, isn't it also a willing person? I wouldn't be willing. Like an ally? Yeah, I thought yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, but well, I, I use my. Regardless, you're still too big. You're still considered a medium creature. I think it's like halflings and gnomes are like under three feet. So they can. But, well, yeah, so I'll use my full movement to get away, so he'll have a uh, attack opportunity on me. All right. He's going to go ahead and swing. That is a 17? Yes. 17 misses. Oh, actually, roll a con save for your shield of faith because you took damage. No. Oh, you rolled it. Did. From Moonbeam. Constitution saving. I forgot about that, too. Um, 10? That'd be a success, right? You took 16 points. I don't know. It'd be 10. 10. Yeah, you succeed. You just succeed. <laughs> Fuck you. Because it's, double, it's, it's <laughs> half the damage. You Fuck you for the damage. It's half the damage or 10, whichever is higher. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought the rules was. Yep. Cool. Uh, Bray. Oh, no. Aya? No, me. I'm no, John, the orc. The orc, sorry. All right, 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 right. The half orc, seeing him running that way, is going to go after him. 5, 10, 20, 25. And swing at John with his maul. Oof, that's going to miss. Oh, hmm. Go hit it. Yeah, that's an 8 plus 5, 13. Dang. Come on, buddy. I'm begging you to hit me. Next up is Bray. What you doing, Bray? I'm going to kill the party. That's what I'm <laughs> Yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, I am, actually. So I'm going to bring Moonbeam 25-30. So it's going to go 25 feet here. Hit Big John. Uh huh. Gonna hit Kane. Thirty. And then it's going to. Oh shit! Hold on. And then I'm gonna bring it over to Moon. Stupid. So it hits everyone, including. Except Aya, she's she hasn't had a turn in it, so she can't. She she hasn't had a turn to start in Moonbeam, so technically she's not affected. If the moonbeam goes through her, she is. Unless you're passing it through the tiger. No, I wouldn't pass it through the tiger. Yeah, she she is affected because it's going through her space. Uh, when a creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn, oh, on a turn or starts its turn there. This is on your turn. Oh, well, okay. 
So everybody's got a con save. Everyone except Bloomin'? No. no. Uh, yeah, everybody except Bloomin'. Oh. Oof. That's a, that's a failure. Yeah, she fails. 13. Save. 23. Save. Still take half damage. Uh, it is... 12 points of so, radiant damage. Half to six. Half to six if you succeed. And oh, she's a half elf, by the way. Okay. Uh, Lumen has to make a con save on the beginning of his turn. And I need to do damagey things. Gross. Gross. Yeah, it's not... No one's attacked. You haven't taken damage. That's why you haven't been able to break it. Nobody tried to hit Don't me. Don't worry, that's changing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, next up is Aya, and you're right, that is changing because you just hit her. How much was the damage again? Uh, 12. <sighs> Oof. She ain't looking so hot. Um, I mean, she's looking hot. She ain't looking great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not when I burn all of her flesh off. Thinking you've turned against them, she's going to sacred flame your ass. I need you to do a dexterity saving throw. Dex save. Correct. Uh, 18. Ah, you pass. Gross. Unaffected. Well, uh, and I, for her I, bonus I action. I damage, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't roll a con for anything or anything, right? Um, no, because you didn't take damage. On her bonus action, she's going to move the Flaming Sphere. I want a Flaming Sphere. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Oops. Oh, no, I guess it still hits a bad guy. She was trying to move it to you, but that's as far as it can go. You gotta go up 15 feet, though. Yeah, but it's currently, it was 20 feet in the air next to the Cambion. Ooh, got it. Yeah, so now it's coming down 5 feet in an no, angle. No, really, please hit me, please, for the love of Christ. <laughs> she tried. Next up is the uh, Cambion. Um... Seeing how successful you've been, he's going to leave you alone. However, he feels like he's confident that he can come in and play hand-to-hand -hand now. So he's going to go 5, 10, 50, 20, 20, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and go next to the half-orc. And he's going to take his spear at Big John. <laughs> Bring it for me. Oof. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Uh, 22. That will hit me. I'm gonna use my reaction, Bob. Okay. And I'm gonna use my reaction, and uh, in doing so, I'm gonna need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 10 4. So here's the deck save, and then I'll roll the damage in a second of this weapon. That'll be a 17. Oh, uh, you'll succeed, but you're still gonna take a little bit of something. That's fine. And I'm gonna roll the spear. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That is five damage on the spear. All right. Uh, and I rolled 10 lightning damage, so you're going to go ahead and take half of that, love. Oof. Five. Oh, five. Okay. And, and how much damage was that overall, you said? Uh, five. You give five, I give five. Okay. And then I got to make a con save on my shield of faith. Oh, yeah. You, uh, 10 is the DC. Oh, I uh, failed it. And that's a uh, shield of faith. Yeah, shield of faith drops. And Kane, you are up. I'm gonna stab Bray. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God, stab Bray. Let's see if you can hit him. Oh God, come on. <laughs> uh, that's a modded twenty hit. And then luckily it's a D four. While you do that, I'm gonna check these candles. Uh, seven. As I stab you into the ribs. Yes, do it. I'm going to go bright, snop out of it. Uh, do I get to roll this at advantage as well? Because I have advantage against being charmed. Correct. So Wisdom save with advantage. advantage. Uh, natural 18. So you break a, out. Not a 23. Yeah, uh, you break out of the charm. You realize that this guy has been in control of you this whole entire time. 
and you're finally seeing things the way that they're, they are. You're not happy. And then I'm gonna use uh, my move speed. <laughs> 15, fuck, 20, 25, 30. Did you go around the long way? I, I went uh, around the long way, yes. All right. Trying to avoid any kind of attack. Of yeah, that, that's, that's what I was checking. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Lumen, you're uh, after Kane when he's done. Unfortunately, you have to still roll a con save. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're in the moonbeam. Does he have to, uh, he have to make a con save? The, uh, oh, I do have to make a con save. Yes. For moonbeam, right? Fail. Fail. Uh, uh, uh. Ten. DC. That it's what? Ten. Ten. I got an eight. Oh! It drops. <laughs> I'm safe. Yep. I've never been so happy. I'm not in danger. <laughs> You're not in danger. I'm so happy. <gasps> I'm so happy that I didn't kill the entire party. <laughs> Just moonbeam falls. So now Lumen. Ooh. I mean, you were just, you were almost incinerated, and right before that light hit you, it kind of fizzles out. Okay. Well, I gotta do, I'm gotta. i going to run up and, and, uh, and attack this bad boy here. Yeah, Rotate go for it. Rotate. And can I recommend, if you go here, you'd be oh, flanking. You are right. We're not used to playing with hex maps. That's the only reason why I give it to you. <laughs> Okay. Let's see what Here's I the first time. Is the hexagon map? That was a one. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That was That's a good. modded twenty. Uh, so the one. What were you attacking with for the one? Uh, well, that was advantage, right? So I get two rolls. Oh yes, yes. Ooh, you're right. I think you said that. Ooh. Okay. So short sword does two plus three, so five points of piercing damage. All right. How's he? How's he looking? He's looking horrible. Like he has cuts and gouges. His eyes bulging out. Like he doesn't look good. If, if I use my bonus to punch him, and it doesn't kill him, can I use my key point to use a second one? Like a flurry of blows. Yeah. Or do I have to do it beforehand? Normally you do it beforehand, but I can give it to you. Okay. I don't think you're gonna need it, but yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay. Well then, unarmed strike. That. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you think you know where he's at, but you're still kind of delirious from being unconscious and you completely just miss. Well, I use that key point then. All right, go for it. So your second unarmed strike. Out of 20. Out of 20, that hits. So that's going to be seven points of damage. Oh, he had four damage left. How do you want to do that? Well, I want to take out that mask that I have, that gold mask covered in jewels, and just slam him across the face with it. Yeah, I just smashes through like and you can see like the imprint of almost all the jewels none of it leaves the mask but you can see them all divided in his face as he just caved his face right in he's down and then i spit on him he's out I'm um i died i think you still have like half your movement uh no you used half your movement to get up yeah i think you have, like five more feet if in case you want to remove or anything um i can't really do much can i not really. You use your action bonus action. Yeah. So oh, I'd stay where you're at. Yeah, I'm just gonna face here. Cool. Uh, next up is the tiger that's dead. So we'll take him off initiative. Uh, Big John. All right. Ambien and the lizard. All right. I had about enough of you, Prospero. I ain't doing this shit no more. Bring uh, it. What I'm about to do is I'm literally gonna take a chip of mica out of my sack. I'm gonna go ahead and literally just clap it against my hands. Of course he is. And I'm going to cast Shatter on both him and the guy next to me. Okay. So they have to make a constitution save. Cool. I Don't worry about it, boy. So we're gonna go, we're gonna do the half work first. Roll a d20. That's a 15. I think that succeeds. Uh, it does. 17? Yeah, it succeeds. Okay, and then uh, the Cambion is gonna do. 
Oof. Ooh. Yeah, that's a nine. That's a fail. Then I am going to use my channel Divinity Destructive Wrath. And I'm gonna do 24 thunder damage. Hell yeah. <sighs> on both? Well, 24 on the Cambian, and it'll be 12 on the other fucker. Okay. That's 12. How do you wanna do this? It's on the Yo! <laughs> you wanna know how much Exactly 24. <laughs> oh. <laughs> exactly 24. Oh. I'm glad do I got this tattoo by the grace of Thor. Get the fuck out of my area. And the thunder just emits from him, and before he can even like retaliate, it just smashes right in. You don't see much damage on the outside, but all the internal organs on the inside just... And with that, you see him hit the ground, and little by little starts sizzling away as he falls dead on the floor and with that stand by hold for sure this is where more things happen Good. We're, we're gonna change the music so once he dies you start realizing the real big bad <laughs> the real big bad up. comes out um the the half work stops fighting you and like it's like shaking his head like he's been asleep the whole time and is like looking around like where where am i like and just starts realizing what's gone down as he's little by little remembering and he stops fighting you know um he is no longer feral like he's starting to come back to and you also feel the sensation of a click as your masks are no longer attuned to you. Uh, Throw that fucking thing off. You can take them off, yeah. No problem. I'm gonna keep mine. <laughs> um, yeah. From the far end of the hall, you see Kara walking in and walks up the stairs walks to where you're located and is like, oh, you've defeated him. You've done it. Cock the hammer back on my gun. <laughs> and where were you this whole time? I'm sorry. There are things that I am not allowed to interfere with. And this was one of them. As you see her, her form starts to change. And she changes into a winged being. And uh, everyone do a religion check. Great. <laughs> I'm the worst cleric on the planet. Yikes. 14. 14. 7. Cool. 6. Natural 20. So 14 and 20. How do you get a 6 as a cleric? I'm not intelligent. I mean, Flock is the same way, don't worry. Um, Fock is horrible at religion. Um, the, the two of you that rolled over a 10 realize and know this to be a deva. This is a celestial being, definitely 100%. It's, it's an angelic being. She is from the celestial realm. Um, and she tells you how sometimes they are not allowed to interfere in certain areas this was one of them um even though that the war has been going on for centuries between the infernal and the celestial there are places where they are bound not to be allowed to interfere with one another hence why they have humanoids to help them mm -hmm. in their tasks that's what aya was here for that's what zula was here for as well uh bray's gonna lean over to kane are we, are we fighting her now? Is that? No. <laughs> no. Here, let me help you. As she, you see her. You, she starts getting brighter and brighter to the point that you can't directly look at her, and you feel all of your wounds heal. You feel all of the patches of fur, everything that's starting to morph, change back 
to your true self. You're no longer changing into animals. And she changes everything is as fully healed be. up. Yep, you're fully healed up, um, health wise. Thank you. Well, greatly appreciate that. No, I I have to thank you. Like, if it wasn't for you, he'd still be doing that, just converting people for his own personal gain. So, what happens now? Well, our war has been going on for centuries, and will keep continuing for centuries. But at least we know that this battle has been fought and has been won thanks to y'all. All I can do is offer my thanks and give you this. And she gives each one of you an amulet of protection um, that gives you a plus one bonus. Um, and it is the symbol of the Orum. All of you have that medallion with the eye inside the star. Um, and if you wish to keep your mask, you can. We've made sure that the curses on them have been lifted, but the advantages are still there. That's nice to know. What does this mask do? And I, I, I pull up the golden one with all the jewels. Oh, that one's just very, very expensive. <laughs> cool. Doesn't do anything. <coughs> Happy about that? Thank you so much for saving the realm. However, there are more battles to be fought. I bid you adieu. And you see that she gets really bright to the point that, again, she's almost blinding. And when you open your eyes again, she is gone. Gonna look around. Uh, is everyone but her still there? Everyone seems to... Uh, they're getting their... Emotions and everything in order. Their bearings, thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Um, they're, they're, they're getting their bearings. Um, they're starting to kind of shift back from being animalistic and drunk. And, you know, just this whole entire thing has just been a fucking mess. Um, so everyone is slowly making their way out the door and just wanting to forget about this horrible night. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Aya. I'm going to take my hat off and I'm going to say, well, we have a perfectly good bedroom now to get more acclimated. And I'm not a fox anymore. <laughs> I guess we do. I'm a wall of so 20 Grab her by her waist. Take her in and kiss her. All right. And I'm going to. I'm going to stroke behind her hair. I'm going to knock the moon mask down onto the floor and look at Bray as I take her into the room and put the hat on the doorknob. <laughs> All right. Then you take her in, you close the door, and yeah. I grab that fucking moon mask. <laughs> you grab, you grab the moon it. mask. And with that, you guys have just saved Inverdo. Woo! Here we go. Woo! In the battle of good and evil. I had uh, one spell from it. <laughs> I did so much damage. To the yeah, to everyone but the bad guy. Literally, I was down to five health at the end. Same. That's four. But well, I was <laughs> holding a dice in my finger. I was like, <laughs> oh no. Am I getting super character again? I don't know. Oh. I, uh, there, there were other stuff. You guys never went downstairs. No, we had time. Have time. I know. But yeah, th there really wasn't much. You would have found some dead bodies of like half people, half uh, animals. And then you would have had like five bodies of like one of them, his arm is mixed with like a gator. The other one's mixed with a like, I, I don't know, like just different shit. Just weird but, shit. Yeah, just weird shit. But you didn't miss much by not going downstairs. Like I'll still show you the map, but like, yeah, there ain't, there ain't that. Cool. There ain't much well, down there. Uh, Carlos, was... do, you wanna, do you wanna send us out? Yeah, no, definitely. You guys, thank you so much for going on this adventure with me. I'm going to go back to the title screen just because I don't want to like stare at a basement while I do this. Uh, but yeah, like, thanks so much. I'm like, this is one of my few times that I get to DM. It's not something I do often, but it was great. I can't wait for the next one. And uh, next one is Mike's. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so next. That means mine's coming up next. Uh, it's going to be uh, level six. It's going to be a good time.
Yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah. So next week, check that out. If it's not next week, we got to whenever it is. Yeah. So see you around. Sweet. Bye guys. Bye everyone.